Good evening, everyone. I'm Sumit Kanu, and on behalf of Railway Academy, I welcome you all to this two hours masterclass session on effective project management for railways and metro. Uh, thank you so much for taking out your precious time for this session. We look forward to uh, making it an insightful session for all of you. So, uh, so uh, as we proceed forward, I would like to start with the introduction about Railway Academy for people who, who are uh, attending this our webinar series for the first time. So uh, I'll quickly uh, introduce our uh, organization and uh, master trainers for today's session, and then we'll proceed with the masterclass. So uh, about Railway Academy, we are a training company focused uh, in the railway and smart mobility sector. Uh, we have uh, we conduct uh, certificate courses, postgraduate diploma courses in collaboration with universities in India across uh, signaling, RAM, safety, OHE, telecommunications. Uh, and uh, our students work with top railway companies across the world. So, uh, so in, uh, in the last uh, uh, three and a half years, uh, we've trained more than 5,000 people uh, across uh, railway industry, not only in India, but uh, also people from Middle East, Indonesia, UK, Australia, uh, Turkey, have attended our course programs. So, uh, so we specialize in uh, three types of solutions. We, we offer uh, onboarding uh, training solutions to various companies. We also help in uh, recruitment, recruiting experienced railway professionals uh, through a pool of trained manpower. Uh, in addition to that, if there is any organization in the railway sector which is looking forward to custom training, on signaling, RAM, RAMs, functional safety, Senelec standards, OHE, uh, we also offer them custom training as per their requirements. So uh, apart from this, uh, we also have a virtual training academy uh, wherein we offer self-paced course programs. We offer custom, uh, certificate courses to uh, organizations and uh, working professionals to uh, acquire the new age railway skills to advance in their career. Uh, these, this is the list of our training programs. So we have uh, training programs on RAMs and safety, uh, Senelec standards, as you can see on screen, functional safety, RAMs. We also have a very interesting program on data management for safety critical systems. Railway application engineering, we have uh, programs on Kavach, which is an Indian TCAS, uh, application logic training, inter uh, electronic interlocking, microlock to Railway signaling, we've got comprehensive as well as basic courses. Uh, we recently uh, started a course on uh, NSW, New South Wales, Australia, uh, competency uh, requirements for signaling detail design. Uh, apart from that, we have uh, courses on EMI, AMC, OHE, train propulsion systems, rolling stocks. We also provide coaching programs for IRSC module exams. So we have a program uh, on uh, helping working professionals for to clear module A. Uh, as you can see, project management, we are from today, we'll be announcing our 20 hour certificate course in project management for railways and metro. So next December and January, uh, the programs that we're looking at launching are uh, in December, we are looking at uh, launching the project management training. Uh, we're looking at launching a certificate course on Kavash, automatic train protection system. Then we're looking at commencing IRSC module B exam as the results are expected to be out in December. So we'll be commencing a coaching program for working professionals to qualify module B. Apart from that, some smaller, uh, small duration courses on safety demonstration for railway projects is something that we want to focus on in the month of December. January, we're looking at starting a advanced certificate course program, which is, a, which is quite a comprehensive uh, training course that we have on railway signaling. Uh, RAMs, uh, we'll be, we are planning to start in January. In addition to that, we're looking at uh, uh, conducting a live 12-hour uh, certificate courses. So all of these courses are going to be live, conducted by trainers uh, uh, during weekdays as well as weekends as per the requirements of the working professionals. So, uh, so this is about the training programs. Uh, if you'd like to, so all of these training program notifications come on to our LinkedIn 
uh, page. Uh, you can you can find Railway Academy on LinkedIn. You can uh, or scan this uh, QR code to uh, reach our page, and you can follow us. All the all the course related updates, all the free webinars, masterclass updates would be coming on to our LinkedIn pro, uh, page. The recording of today's session will be hosted on our YouTube channel. Uh, the QR code for that YouTube channel is mentioned on your screen. In addition to that, uh, we also share updates on Facebook, so you can follow us uh, there as well. So, uh, so now uh, coming to today's webinar uh, masterclass. So, I would like to now introduce our master trainers for today's session. So, I would like to introduce our first uh, master trainer today, Mr. Pralay Kumar Das. Uh, Mr. Pralay uh, has experience of 27 plus years. He's worked in India, Malaysia, Bangladesh, Oman, and Qatar. His expertise uh, lies around HSE audit, HSE training, risk assessment, incident investigation. Uh, he is also uh, got Nibosh International General Certification, and uh, he specializes in uh, safety and risk. He's a uh, he is a Lean Six Sigma Black Belt in Quality Management and uh, comes with a rich experience on project management. And he'll be sharing uh, his ex uh, um, expertise on aspects of project management today. Uh, with Mr. Pralay, Pralay we have uh, Pralay, sir. Uh, yeah, good evening, everybody. Yes. So, um, so I would like to introduce our next uh, master trainer. Uh, Mr. Samrat Ghosh, who is currently uh, based in Qatar. He has an experience of over 21 years. So he has served as a project uh, uh, program and performance management professional uh, across uh, railway and metro projects. Uh, he's also a, a Lean Six Sigma belt. Uh, he's a chartered project management surveyor. Uh, certified Project Management Professional, PMP Prince 2, Certified Planning and Scheduling Professional, Certified Cost Professional, Scrum Master, and uh, he's also an honorary lifetime member of the Guild of Project Controls. Uh, his expertise is on strategic planning, project controls, pro program delivery, KPIs and performance assessment and reporting, has worked across metros, oil and gas, road, bridge, highways, industrial plants, building construction projects. So he'll be... Uh, sharing his uh, inputs and experience on project management, effective project management. So that's the theme. So we are also expecting one more uh, master trainer to join us today. Uh, Mr. VK Krishnan, he is an I IPMA certified level B senior project manager and Siemens certified senior project manager. Uh, he's an accredited chartered engineer in the UK. And uh, he comes with uh, experience of 38 years of experience across uh, rail transport business, uh, critical projects and various leadership positions. Uh, he's also a fellow with uh, uh, Institution of Railway Signaling Engineers, IRSC London. Uh, he will also be sharing a uh, few insights on project management today. So uh, I would like uh, to, as we proceed, so I would like to touch base on one particular aspect today. So. When there are so many project management courses available in the industry already, so why uh, are we looking at uh, launching a, a certificate program in project management for railways and metro projects? So uh, uh, in this web, in this masterclass towards the end, we'll be also talking about the upcoming course program that we are looking at launching. So, uh, so uh, now I would like to uh, get down to the basic question: Why? we actually need a focused training program around railways and metro. So allow me to share uh, the presentation today. Just one minute, please.
So I hope you can see my screen. Please type in yes if you're able to, in the chat box if you're able to see my screen. Please type in chat and uh, Okay, thank you. So, uh, so let me first uh, give an, an, an introduction about today's. Uh, okay, so uh, participants who have raised their hand, uh, I would request them to please type in your query in the chat box. I'll take them up uh, during the session. So uh, we're done with Railway Academy. So, uh, so what we'll be actually looking at uh, various aspects of project management overview. So how the evolution of project management, introduction to project management, roles and responsibilities and five critical competencies for effective project management is what uh, is would be the focus point for today so purpose of this webinar and training uh, why are we organizing it so the idea of doing this two hours of master class is to create awareness about project management within the rail fraternity we also wanted to share basic understanding on uh, effective project management what is effective project management uh, we wanted to talk about a traditional agile form of project management. So uh, we wanted to introduce uh, a training program which is focused for this particular industry, which talks about uh, the intricate complex problems within this industry and how to solve it with the five critical skills, uh, competencies that we'll be talking during the session. So uh, after, uh, so what we're aiming to do through our courses, we would like you to understand the project management, develop a proficiency on project management, understand the nuances of implementation of project management, enrich your knowledge, and of course, utilize this knowledge to uh, grow in your career. So uh, now coming back to uh, why we need project management in metros and railways. So generic versus domain specific, why we need railway specific project management, and what are the advantages of uh, specific project management. So I'll start with a question. I wanted to talk about a case first, wherein I wanted to highlight and get your inputs as well. So all of you who are attending this, I would like to highlight a case. So as you can see, uh, there is a case uh, presented on the screen right now. So there is Central Metro Rail Corporation is building a Metro Rail of 56 kilometers, of which 39.5 is to be done through underground tunnel. The project has 12 elevated stations and 26 underground stations, along with a depot. The entire operation in the first phase was planned within with 48 trains. Now there is a company called Great Tunneling Company, which is an overseas company which has been awarded the tunneling contract to build the tunnel of 39.5 kilometers in 42 months. This company, Great Tunneling Company, has appointed Mr. Climstone to lead the project as project manager. After seven months of award of the contract, Great Tunneling Company project manager finds that there, uh, the tunnel boring machine has hit a rocky strata, obstructing and delaying the project. This was found out after the, the uh, tunnel boring machine's cutter was broken and the machine is damaged. The replacement of the cutter and repair will take four months. So, I hope this case is clear that what is the actual problem. So uh, the boring machine has, uh, uh, the TBM cutter has been broken and machine is damaged. The replacement of the cutter and repair will take four months. Now, the my key question to all the participants here is that what should you do uh, as a domain specific project management professional? So now uh, there is a meeting being scheduled with the customer and the consultant to inform the following, the damage to the TBM, tunnel boring machine, the current situation. If you are a project manager in the role of Mr. Climstone, how will you approach the meeting and what topics will you be presenting and impact? So before we start and go on to the methodology of project man effective project management and our trainers start the session. So I would like to set the context here and would like to invite you to participate through your viewpoint. So what would you like to do? So, uh, there are two ways to do this. One, you can put in your inputs in the chat, or if you'd like to raise your hands, I would like to, uh, I would unmute you and hear your opinions on this. So we'll only take two to three inputs right now. So uh, this is first come first basis, or if you'd like us to take your inputs through chat, we'll definitely be looking at. So please think, uh, please see this case study and please share 
that if you are a project manager, how will you approach the meeting and what topics will you be presenting and, and uh, presenting to impact? Please go ahead. I'll, I'll look forward to your uh, inputs in the chat box, please. Okay, can try to answer the case, Ribu Gaur. Okay, so let's hear Ribu Gaur on this. Uh, what, what he would like to Ribu. Okay. So Ribu, I have unmuted you. Please uh, respond to the with your inputs. Double, I'll come to you. Uh, am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes Ribu. Please go ahead. Uh, Prolay sir, please uh, 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 add value to this conversation, please. Okay. Uh, this sure. Is a, uh, this is a uh, typical case uh, and a case study which uh, I have noticed in a recent past from uh, from a DMRC project, uh, um, where a similar TBM uh, cutter was damaged and that was uh, replaced after some some time. So. I think uh, in this case, when a meeting is to be approached, the project manager is supposed to come with solutions, and it can be it can be a replacement of uh, uh, the same machine with a with a fresh machine, which has to arrive as a replacement. In the meantime, the cutter will go for a, re a repair. And secondly, there are there can be an advanced technique of uh, 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 taking care of this hard rock strata of soil. Which which can be consulted with a with a expert consultant, so that this kind of damage should not happen in future. So there, I think there will be two way strategy. One is to find a, 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 a strata related data to the consultant, and they give a solution uh, how to how to cut this kind of soil. And secondly, find an immediate replacement of TBM, uh, and uh, there can be multiple TBM to be engaged. Uh, in the in the same area so that a backup is available and this can be uh, sorted out okay thank you ribu thank you for your input uh, you. i have our, our our second master trainer mr samrat ghosh has also joined uh, us now welcome sir and uh, please you, go ahead you. with your uh, engagement with the participants now no i would prefer to hear from another one or two person as yes. you say uh, first yes. Yeah. yes yes please so uh, uh, so I'll be unmuting. Uh, let me uh, so uh, let me unmute. Uh, okay, Ayush Sharma, I'm unmuting you, please. Ayush. Uh, so yes, Ayush, I've unmuted you. Please uh, share your inputs. Yeah. Hi. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, so uh, like I uh, go similar. Uh, I go with similar opinions like a Rebu. So first of all, uh, I would like to know about the main reason that like, uh, if our study about the geo or geotechnical things of the soil strata was good enough, like the cutter which we engaged was good or not. So uh, first of all, I would like to know the reason uh, as a team, like I will discuss with the team that our cutter was right or not, uh, so that uh, anything in the future uh, will not happen in the same way. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, like the machine which we are using, if uh, if we can procure the uh, like multiple machines as backup, uh, that I'll go uh, like I'll go with it. So uh, like basically, first of all, I'll try to know the reason from our studies of uh, the strata, and secondly, for the future to create backups uh, to create backup uh, so that our uh, work cannot be delayed like four months as as it happened in our case. That I'll do. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ayush. So uh, yeah. next, I would like to take uh, uh, Mr. Gary McDonald's viewpoints. Gary, I have unmuted you. I've asked you to unmute yourself and please share your inputs. Yes, hello there. I think the first thing I would be doing is when I approach the meeting and approach the client is to ask the question, was the rocky strata a known, a known, a known factor? During the borehole testing before, before the uh, TBM is launched, they should have a uh, reasonable knowledge of what is actually down there underground if the borehole testing was not done and if there was not a clause in the contract saying that the contractor is going to take full responsibility the first thing i would be asking for is for the client to agree to a non-penalty delay while the uh, the tbm is repaired and everything's put back onto track to try and get it back into the critical path 
if you're going to get four months delay, your critical path is obviously going to uh, going to be affected there. So you need some cover to get that back on track. Okay. Thank you so much, Gary, for your input. So, uh, uh, Samrat, sir, can we can we now take up uh, your viewpoints on this and take this session forward? Yeah, sure. I was just going to the chat, you know, while uh, Gary was answering. So Manish, Lohit, Firoz, almost has touched base the point. But the main point was, you know, which Gary has covered, which I wrote in my notepad, is unforeseen. It's a completely unforeseen event, Gary. The borehole record would have been given an indication. I hope they would have a different kind of cutter to be placed, you know, for the TBM. So it is an unforeseen event. So when the unforeseen events arrived and in this kind of situation, consequences are there, as you said, you know. The first thing as a project manager, you know, he should call, talk to the planning manager uh, and find out the critical path, whether this four months, because his contract is 42 months, as we said in the contract uh, meeting. So four months is 10%. 10% you know, uh, delay will be mitigated. It's possible to mitigate it, okay? In in a thumb rule basis and based on experience, we generally consider 10 to 15% of delay could be covered. And TBM and such a thing that there are plenty of scope to cover this TBM. So if I am a planning manager, I'm hiring a planning manager hat, so I would say, yeah, it is possible to cover. And how it is possible to cover, I'm go not going to the, the delay compensation part, Gary, because in Indian context, we put it as an Indian context or, you know, in global way, if you go and tell that, you know, uncompensated delay, time gap, and, you know, coming with a claim. So matter will go in a different direction. You know? As a proactive method, I will not talk about that initially. So I'll talk to my, you know, if I am in the project manager, I'll talk to my planning manager, find out this 10 to 15% delay because there is a float in the program always. There is a contingency, so it can be covered or not, first thing. Second thing probably I'll do, you know, he, he if, a, if, a, if a very clever, uh, smart project uh, planning manager, he will say, yeah, some part will be possible to mitigate, some part not. Then probably as a project manager, I look into the, you know, it is underground project, the casting sequence, the capacity of the, you know, the casting yard, because generally in Indian climate, we generally do uh, 12 meter, 10 to 12 meter, you know, uh, TBM drive in a day. So we can increase to even in in my last project, it is increased to 16 meters. So so it's possible. So if you would, if you produ produce the casting at more panel, you can supply the put it thing and you can cover it up. So in that context, I'll try to you know see in both way whether it is a time gap possible to mitigate as well as production capacity. Now, coming back to the part what you said, Gary, it's very, yeah, it's contractually, I have all the rights because it's unforeseen event, board log data doesn't show the information. So obviously I'll build up, a, you know, within 28 days, I put the first notices of claim and accordingly I'll proceed contractually. But my approach will be a bit soft, okay, in the initial stage, unless until the entire investigation is done, all the fact findings are there, everything is done. So with this, yeah, it is a, it, yeah, it is a, it is a problem that could be resolved with the project management approach. Yeah, and uh, that's the thing. I'll be, you know, I'll be, I'll be taking as a project manager or project writer, I'll be taking a balanced approach. I'll see my risk. I'll see the reputation. I'll see the, you know, all the aspects of a project management, and then I'll act it out. So all of you, whosoever, given the answer. I mean, there is no right answer, no wrong answer. It is if it's perspective, and this perspective is coming from experience. You know, somebody having more than experience than me, you would have done something different. So that's why the project management, the effective way of project management is very critical. You know, learning from day to day, learning from incidents, learning from your friends, colleagues, and even from supervisor and labor. So you know, that, that's a very nice case study presented, you know, by our team uh, for this presentation to kick with. And I'm really glad, you know, people are out of almost 20, 25 people has responded in the chat. And it seems, you know, uh, this is not a, it is not a uh, typical project management webinar or the our course will be when you go through, you'll understand. We have not done a PMI standard course or Excel standard course. We have given more bit of, you know, more bit of uh, flavor on the experience. And I'm really glad that we got the right uh, audience. Thank you. Thank you. So. Uh... We'll move forward from here, and I would like to invite our uh, our uh, first speaker, Mr. Prolay, to uh, initiate the effective project management overview. Sir, uh, so Samrat, sir, how uh, how would you like to take take it? Would you like to take up these slides and uh, take it forward from here? Yeah, the first part could be done by Prolay, sir. Yes, and then so, um, you know, as per our plan, I'll move it out since you know. Sure. Sorry. So, so, Professor, whenever you want me to move the slides, please let me yeah. know. 
So, see, effective uh, project manager concept. Uh, first of all, good evening, every, everyone, one, once again, those who have joined uh, later on. Uh, this is Pralay, Pralay Kumar Das. Uh, I will take up some session in this session with you. Uh, and it is very glad for me to take this session with you. Uh, please, uh, if you have any queries during this uh, session, please put in your chat box. So our coordinator, he will uh, take all the all the effective one and we'll discuss afterwards, after the work slides okay so the effective project management concept see you see that the what is project management first already i think uh, we have discussed here that sorry the sumit already told that why this this type of concept is there and why we are doing this webinar this project Sumit, can you go to the yes, slide so please, mode, please? Sumit, the slide mode is changing. Yeah, now it's fine. Yeah, now it's okay. Fair. Effective project management means having a firm control on the scope, budgets, resource, per personnel, and the timeline dedicated to the project. That means when we are going for a project, so there should be something firm before starting the project. Okay, that means what is the scope we should know. The budget, obviously, the budget is a factor. We should know we should be within the budget, what is allocated and all these things. The resource, we cannot put a more resource to mitigate the uh cope up the budget. The, the personnel, the competency in personnel health, the competence will come. Comrade will come in detail after that. And the timeline, that is most important thing because here all the projects now in everywhere we see the project there is a deadline always why because dead, if deadline is not there is the end limit we don't know there will be no ending so that's why the deadline the timeline must be there so all together this is called when we are calling that is called a project management a effective what uh, somrat just not told so the effective project manager is able to manage unplanned issues see the tbm breakdown it is unplanned issues unforeseen issues which we do not know how to mitigate that thing how to roll the ball further because we cannot just stop we cannot just uh, tell no we cannot go further we cannot say like that so from there we have a have to have a goal and target to progress to mitigate those things and overcome the situation which which, which was there so that is the requirement of the effective project management so insight for effective project management, what are the key insights are there? Project versus program. We should know what is the project and versus profile management, portfolio management means the project, first we should know project. What is the project program? Means how, what is the schedule? What is the budget? What is the inflow? What is the outflow? These all things. Then portfolio management means how each of the segment will be managed. Next is coming, the key insights are partnership and accountability. Who is the, who is owner of this particular activities or particular segment, particular department, and what is the accountability? How we will perform and what, what a company wants or what a project wants from him. So that are the things is very much required. Rules and responsibility, see, in this world, Without proper roles and responsibilities, it's very difficult to deliver a product within a time frame, within a budget, or within a expectation, as per the expectation. Okay, so roles and responsibilities are very important for each and everybody. It applies from project manager to the uh, office boy, whoever may be in this project. See, roles and responsibilities is one of the key aspects. If people has to know what is his role and how he should deliver. Okay, then requirement and improvements means what we want, how we want, and what is we need actually that we should that we should know. Then delivery versus or with communication. This is one of the key aspects of any project. If the company communication failure is that there will be a delay. 
there will be a mismatch of the opinion. There will be a uh, incident. There will be a quality problem. All the things will be there if the communication is not there. Means which is required to be communicated. That need to be. That is the co communication actually. If there is a gap or there is a if you are com com I am communicating half, then the delivery will be delayed because you don't know what is the expectation or what is the requirement. So that are the thing communication is very effective tool for a project management. For ensuring an effective project implementation, what is the requirement? Start with a clear project scope. That means this, when we'll get a project, it may be a whole project with a project manager or maybe a sub project, like somebody, maybe construction manager for his, a project will be a, maybe only the civil part. So for him, that is the project. So there should be a clear scope, must be identified. Without that, it is very difficult for a person who is executing the job, who is controlling the job, to execute or control that job. Put everyone on a timeline, means, suppose I'm a project manager, I want to deliver a project. I need, it, I need to focus a timeline when this survey will be completed, when after that, when the civil work will start and when it, it will, how it will progress, when this mechanical they start or MEP they will start, when the electrical will start, after which stage of electrical system, then the testing and commissioning team or maybe the project delivery team can uh, uh, put in. So these are the things is very required. The timeline is most important. PPR for risk, that is one of the important aspects that I will come in later on in during this uh, discussion on safety part. So PPR for risk, see, whenever we are doing any job going to be executed, we can foresee some of the things. Some of the things is beyond our control, like weather. Take an example like weather. Weather is not in our control. When it, we can forecast, but the, ultimately what will happen, it depends upon the particular on that day, the condition of the weather. Okay. Implementation while monitoring the metrics. So implementation is very important when you are doing this uh, monitoring. It is what whether it is implemented in which stage and all these things. Emphasize the project's purpose. Actually, sometimes what is happening now when we are, we are executing a project. We are having all the standards with us, all the drawings with us, all the designs, aspects with us. So we have to emphasize on the what is the requirement, what is the requirement for the particular project. That is the very important. So that way we have to emphasize on the project's purpose, keeping an eye on the quality. Obviously, without quality, when I will deliver something to some, some of the customer, obviously, if the quality is not meeting the standard, customer will not accept that thing. So that means the quality, or you cannot deliver a quality as a whole. You have to deliver the quality time to time, means in all aspects of the of your project venture. Okay, so that is the very important thing for the quality. Quality means does not the end product. Quality means you have from day one to the uh, end date of the project, the delivery date of the project, each day the quality to be maintained. That is the thing required for the quality. Communication with your team. This is most important thing already have told you. Without communication, nothing can move a single inch. Communication and effective communication is very important. The communication is just like that. You are giving a instruction and just for a no. It has to be effect effective means the communication always should be two way. You know, when what you are looking for and what you are getting, both the thing has to be communicated properly. Conduct regular client status meetings. So this is the another one important thing because client is gives us the breads and butters. So what you have to do because what is the status of this project? You have to apply to the client time and again, and it will, will be in a regular interval with the form of the client status meeting. Because you are appraising client, this we are in this stage, what this is the problem, how we are mitigating this problem, 
we are going to deliver this thing. If client is asking anything more from you, that has to be clarified by the client. So that way, this the client meeting is also very much important. Can you go to the next slide, please? Project management evolution. So this is the in before sixties there was a some part of CP, uh, CPM was the project management style. Then it raised to a uh, uh, IPMA and PMI. Sixties, uh, seventies. This has been uh, came in the software based something stagnation or software for PMP or some features. Then 80s is grow practice to PM project management in the world. In 90s, exponential growth of the certificate PM professionals and publications. And 2000 onwards, we are emphasizing setting the practice to project management. This is one of the important things. And this, particularly this part, afterwards, Samrat will take care how it has come when the Samrat will take a session. So I'm not going in the in detail on that because Samrat uh, will be taking care of the project management part further. So I request uh, Sumit, please, can you uh, take it in? So project definition and why project are initiated. So this, this thing also, it is a mainly this project management part. It, it defined by Project Management Institute, PMI, USA. A project is a temporary endeavor undertaking to create a unique product, service, or result. Means, what is project? Project is a temporary endeavor. That means, a temporary endeavor, something we have to do. Means, maybe within two, uh, two years, three years, or one year, whatever may be. Within that, we are delivering a project. We are making something and we are giving to the client, giving to the core customers. That is the project. Okay. Temporarily indicates each project has def definite beginning and end. That obviously, there should be a start and end of any project. Unique indicates that it is not a routine operation, but a specific set of activities designed to accompany a singular goal. That means project delivery is a singular goal. And there should be a design aspect. There should be some specification oriented. Everything will be there. So that is called a project. Key characteristics of a project. A project has a defined objective with an ending time and it is a usually temporary. Obviously, a project always is a maximum time. It is a temporary aspect because we are starting from uh, scratching from zero to 100%. So that way, there is a definitely there is an objective or end time. So either it should be completed within uh, 12 months or 18 months or 24 months or 30 months, whatever maybe. There will be a end time. Every project is unique and is only done achieve a goal. Means each and every project. Suppose you are doing a metro project in, in Chennai, or you are doing a metro project in Calcutta. Obviously, there will be a. Obviously, there will be a difference between construction a metro project in Calcutta and maybe in Chennai. That is different because the environment is different, the people are different, the market is different, maybe the, the clients are different, the requirement is different. Maybe Calcutta, the requirement of the uh, population of passenger will be more. Chennai may be less. Like that, the design will be like that. So there will be each and every project that is a unique requirement. And as for that, the designing and everything is unique. Maybe some similarities will be there, but the Overall scenario is unique. A project can also cut cross organization from lines. Also cut cross organization from lines. So that means a project which is which we have designed, it may ac across the organization, all over the organization. Okay. A project involves unfamiliarity because some new process might be introduced in a firm organization via the project. So any new in, in invention, new requirement, so that the, the a project can also take part on that. Okay. A project failure result in loss uh, asset of wherever resources you had put on stake. If a project is failure, it is a loss of assets, 
or resources. What you put on stake means there is a loss. You may have a huge loss if the project is a failure. To avoid such a failure and all these things, the project are initiated. To meet, how to meet a project? First, we have to see the market demand. Then, strategic business need. What is, how, suppose, if I am doing a railway project only, we are giving a contract to the railway contractor only, those who have done the work. Because the strategic business need, I cannot give a <coughs> project that the somebody does not have a uh, metro rail project. I, I cannot give. Customer request. Customer may request some, the, yeah, please give that project to that particular group of people or particular that, uh, that te use the technology or something like that. Technological change, because sometimes project, maybe in 80s, whatever metro rail we have done in Calcutta, the same way we, we, are, we cannot do in uh, 2020 in somewhere, because the technology and everything is different now. Social environment need. See, sometimes what is happening, no? you might have seen the metro railway design initially something, and after that, they're changing, because maybe the demand is different. The social or environment impact is there. I know some of the project in the Romania, a project in some railway project, which I supposed to go there, but what happens? Suddenly it stopped. Why? Because the environment, there will be environment issues if the project runs through, the, through that coastal area. So that type of thing is there, legal or regulatory, regulatory. That is one of the, because wherever you want to do the project, you have to abide by the rules and regulation of that soil. So that is the first thing you have to abide by. Example of projects, new software development we have to do, data center relocation, modifying a business to improve efficiency, constructing a railway building, constructing a railway line over right. So these are the things we example of a project. So next slide please. Yeah. So, Mr. would you like to add something? Yeah, to I, I, I will take it forward, uh, the sir, from here, okay? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, no problem. Uh, before I take up the further thing, you know, actually, we have missed a very important slide, which I request him, uh, him to go back, the good and bad project management, remember? Uh, can you go back to the slides? I have my separate screen, yeah. So, here, I just want to talk to one or two person. I saw the response given by Firoz was very good. And then I saw the response you know, from Gary. So I just want to give him them two minutes time from their experience, what do you think by, what is your understanding on good and bad project management? If you uh, also uh, uh, unmute to Firoz and then Gary, just for two, two minutes, that's all. Uh, yes, sir, I'm, I'm doing that. Uh, Firoz, I'm unmuting you. And uh, Gary also, I'll unmute. Yeah, please go. Hello, can you repeat your question? Firoz, uh, according to your view, what is the best thing for the project management, like good project management? What do you understand by good project management and what do you understand by bad project management? Uh, there is no bad project man uh, management or uh, good project management. You have to uh, understand the scope of the project and uh, you have to... Uh, uh, to do uh, better planning uh, of the uh, entire project, then you can avoid that uh, this kind of issue uh, in the project. Okay, so great. I think yeah. Okay, no, great. There is no, as I said, there is no right answer. There is no wrong answer in project management. It is a skill how you manage the situation. You know, so you you are correct. Uh, you are correct. So now I go back to Gary. Gary, can you share your thoughts? Yes, my, my idea of project management is um, it's an application of knowledge, really, where you use specific processes and tools to manage and resource a project. Um, identify what it was mentioned earlier on about identifying the knowns, identifying the unknowns and the risks, uh, and basically choosing the best way to manage to get to the end result. Exactly. You just took my, you know, my words, probably. Obviously, I would have explained in a different direction, but that's the right thing. The good when project management differentiate is bad. That's why I put my views on bad. Bad means that when there is no standard, no application and implemented. 
you know, project management can be done not only in system, not even it can be done sitting in the paper. But the project management manager should have enough experience and he knows the, you know, the old, old, old days people, I mean, with due respect to them, they are much better, you know, they are much process oriented, but their process not written in a PMI book or Excelus book. They have invented their own process and they run that over a period of time and they deliver the results. But now, nowadays, those kind of experienced people, what happened? Their knowledge, their entire uh, understanding was not transferred properly to the next generation. That's why the PMI or the Excelizer, IPMA, all the groups came, they standardized that. So therefore, in current days, that kind of senior people, you are very, really lucky if you are able to work with the same senior people. I got in my early days in 1990s, you know, my, my project director was an ex army man in India. So that point of time, he used to tell all those things, but I didn't understand because I, I, I was fresher. In my same project, Mr. Das was there. He might even recall Mr. Sahani. But afterwards, when I came out of India and started working with the international client, I understand what he was telling. But that time I lost my five years of career. You know, I was only six years experience at that point of time. So the bad project management, a good project management is if you implement a standards, uh, a framework, which I'm talking about a little bit later, then that is the thing, you know, you, you, you can predict the outcome and your application will be, you know, much better, you know, time cost and uh, quality, the TCQ cycle that you can be followed. So therefore, uh, there is as such, there no project manager is bad project manager. There are a lot of project managers up there. Even though they are not, they are not doing this kind of, you know, practice or following any standard or PMI or LXLOS, they might be doing their customization. That is also acceptable. But yes, for the customization, he should have enough experience. Like I said, the senior people who are very old people, they have their experience, their lessons learned, and with that, they do the customization project to project. But if you are in a growing up stage and a growing up project manager, which is having around five to 15 years experience, I suggest you guys follow a standard, a protocol, a practice, which is done either in a book, your you know, organization, and do that way, as well as the standards, which is implemented by PMI. They are the, you know, they are the biggest uh, standard implementer in this kind of world. So with that, you know, real and hypothetical. The another point which I done the real. See, all the real, whatever real and hy hypothetical things we, we learn in the in the school. The PMI to certain extent, I feel at some point of time is hypothetical. Some of the principles, some of the things not really possible to implement in the real project management life. But then also when I can see PMI is telling, you know, expert judgment, take your own judgment, customization. So PMI is one way is telling this is a standard. Another way is telling, you know, you have the other alternative. So find out the alternative and apply to the real situation. And applying to the real situation, this alternative, you should have the enough understanding of the subject as well as you should have the experience. Therefore, this is this is one of the things, you know, we, when you start this, this course, which will be coming up, you know, probably after three, four weeks, we have done a lot of brainstorming to design this course. I spoke to a lot of industry specific uh, consultant as well as the staff with the various bandwidth kind of survey I did. I understood that what is the gap in their understanding on the project management. Because project manager, he if a project manager is having 15 years experience, he know what is good, what is bad. You no need to tell them anything. But the person who is moving from a, a, a non-project management background to a project manager background, a person, a person who is a project professional but want to grow in the career, a planning person who wants to grow from planning risk perspective to the project management perspective, for them, this course is really ideal because here we will not talk about PMI standards. You talk about PMI standards where it is required, but we, we will connect the PMI standards practice framework into the real scenario. So therefore, uh, uh, I suggest this, this, this is the way you know, we design the course and once you move, you will understand. Uh, for the time, for the sake of time, I'll not go further detail. Uh, uh, we can move out to the to the slides. Yeah, correct. The description is given. You know, everybody knows what is PMI, uh, PMI standards of project, project program and portfolios. Project is over explained by Mr. Das. Program is kind of collection of projects. Portfolio is collection of programs. So portfolio is managed in a business or organization level. Program can be managed in a area basis or sector basis. And project is a project is an individual standalone basis, okay? And PMI methodology is waterfall, lean, and agile. This will be detailed covered in the uh, in the training course. But here I can tell waterfall is a traditional project management. Lean is doing things, doing things very systematic way. And agile is a fragile, or you know, you know it is a uh, it is followed in the IT sector, where you know the scope is not defined. Our scope is changing over time. In our case, our scope we in the waterfall method. 
we price a project based on the fixed scope okay whatever changes is coming that is a variation but agile environment the scope is changing every day that was mostly for it but now it is there are some projects coming up in construction also they are doing this kind of uh, you know lean their uh, agile approach they are uh, facilitating so framework framework is basically uh, project framework is a framework that maps out the methods process task resource tools needed to execute the job from beginning to end as uh, we say and framework has a you know agile framework agile is a you know it's a methodology which is under, under that framework is probably produced by pmi as well as pins to excelos and uh, ipm also giving now the uh, framework lean framework is you know uh, lean framework is implemented by green belt black belt master black belt six sigma all those things agile framework is nothing but scrum then crystal dynamic uh, gdsm and lean kanban out of this scrum is i am a scrum master so scrum is very popular as well as lean kanban kanban also very popular they will teach you how you will manage your uh, resources your cost your timeline when the when the scope is changing over a period of time next please yeah this is a very basic thing project life cycle everybody knows here probably those who are having experience initiation planning execution closure stage and monitoring and control pa project life cycle is defined by the pmi which is the pmi processes as well as process group there are five process group 10 knowledge areas which is pmi is talking about these things these things you might be knowing already so i'm not going into detail please because it's very very you know it is very very uh, real uh, uh, method i mean academic thing okay let's put in that way okay go ahead next one is the thing here is the effective project that uh, you can say project effective project management roles and it's the general roles and responsibility here basically you know two things we should remember in a whether it is a normal project management good bad effective whatever term you say project sponsor and project manager project sponsor could be uh, anybody you know who has authorization to do that one uh p and, and the project manager is who is managing the project planning execution management the process with day by day basis okay in our real scenario we don't find project sponsor to be very honest when you you know working in a project we don't know who is the project sponsor and that is fine project sponsor sits in a corporate level and he can you know authorize the project that is his job and uh, and the, at the end he is probably accountable for the profit and loss to certain extent of the group or the business but yeah day to day basis project manager or project director is same for us the big project project director project manager is the first standalone project so project manager or project director is responsible to deliver the project with the project team and for that i feel you know it is comes up a couple of things that they need to consider because they are leading a team ultimately is a teams man right so he should have a leadership skill a good communication as mr das said you know communication is the key thing for the delivering the project successfully critical thinking he should think you know pros con alternatives you know what the problematic situation where it came then decision making obviously he need to take as far if you don't take a decision the cost of not taking a decision is higher than the cost of taking a decision cost of making a wrong decision is nothing but the cost of mitigation but cost of not taking a decision it cannot be mitigated because you lost time <coughs> nothing can be substitute <coughs> conflict management problem solving obviously if there is a project there will be conflict there will be problem so it's better to conflict management and problem solving is always done through the you know day to day interaction with the team and that's why it is based there to always the project manager are co located with the team that's the reason negotiating skill when you are doing the pre contract stage or even focus post contract stage you know your cost you know your time and that's why you need to negotiate with the subcontractor and you mitigate your risks by giving a direct contract to the various subcontractors So negotiation skill you have a both way you know win win situation here you should not be too much of you know thinking about saving the money and squeezing the contractor or the vendor so you should be a balanced approach again because if you give a contract at a very low price they will not deliver you know very well and then you lost the time and again you put extra money and then the cost will be again high time management everybody knows i will not talk about anything and have patience yes most of the cases project manager wants things to be done yesterday and he is telling you today it is a fact i have seen in my experience which is not right because it will create unnecessary pressure to the entire team and there are certain things which cannot be done overnight it is a fact so he has to have a patience and understand the sequence the flow 
and how the project has to be delivered okay now uh, here uh, could you please done the poll the first poll for me question answer yeah the poll on your screen i would like you to answer the uh, options please here basically i identified the identified the one soft trait of the project manager because the, all the other traits i have put is basically the you know the the skills the hard skills but there is a need of the soft skill as well without the soft skill a project you cannot manage a project efficiently because i didn't talk about the soft skill so i'm just talking about the soft skill i this poll is still going on so i'll just wait for another sec, a minute to see please please pick up one option from the poll that is being shown onto your screen so that we get to know please participate uh, participants the question which is flashing onto your screen are you able to see the poll yeah i can see the poll yeah okay can you can you select uh, the option sir no i'll discuss that point mm -hmm. once the poll is over i think it's still some pending so we'll close the poll in next 30 seconds okay people are responding people are responding everybody is responding yeah so let's give some time last 70% people responded it's very good uh, in terms of webinar that people are engaged people are listening i am really glad that you know you guys are having patience to listen to somebody whom you cannot see in the back of the screen um should we continue or stop the poll sir i think uh, 90 of 90 people of uh, 130 have responded already more than 70 <laughs> now and i think we can we can close the poll yeah so most of them have given a right answer you know all of the above is answer but nobody has given about the empathetic you know i'll start with the empathetic you know all the things are correct empathetic is understanding the others problem you know how you see another's problem so in project management level you know every time every time you know you cannot go and push people to do something or motivate people to do a very good job you need to understand what is the problem they are facing on their personal life it is very it is very you know i'll work with a various uh, project manager from various nationality i found out that you know uh, some of the i will not take any nationality's name but yeah, i found out some on people some people are not empathetic they no don't, don't talk about how you are you how is the family you know they don't want to understand you your financial personal background they are only giving you the task and a deadline so that is not the right thing the project management should be in the empathetic and understand the other feelings and others you know uh, how they are going through their life trust builder yes trust building is most thing you know if you want to be a good successful team you need to be trust or the first because people will see you from the leader you are the leader people will see you how trust or the you are if you are doing you know uh, work front politics you know you are involved in too much of work front politics with senior people that they will they will, that will give a bad remark response to the junior team in the team your the organization so yeah project manager has to be political some point of time it is required definitely to manage the client manage the situation their expectation but yeah it, you have to build your own trust with your with your team and and you know it's over a period of time you know when you are experience you understand how to do that one so therefore uh, yeah all the above are correct and these are the three the uh, motivated motivation empathy and um, trust building is the main thing that you know as a project manager soft skill to deliver a, a project very very efficiently okay uh, uh, let's go to the next slide it's not moving sir is it now uh, no is it okay now now it's okay correct okay now the real thing is starting you know before we go through this discuss this thing i'll just tell you something most of you understand the competency the competency and uh, uh, what skill set and all those things you have in your life competency is a very 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 vast subject and probably you know project management competencies are several several people can define in a several way 
we try to define it based on the current scenario working understanding in india and the middle east area what are the areas because i got two to three kind of people okay and i spoke to a lot of people to design this course mostly the people who are the who are the project engineers they wants to grow you know project near to project senior project engineer then uh, construction manager and on those level in that the design engineers are also involved and other kind of people who are the planning site planning guy who wants to you know do the that basically the uh, most important job for company but most boring job because they provide the data coordination and all those things how they can go to a project manager level because for them project manager is a first class super super job so he is only given instruction not doing any work but it is not the case actually and the third kind of people you know who is having the experience in different in different domain say a uh, testing commissioning guy a design guy or something those kind of people who comes to project management because they got they got a wide range of experience as well as the sub they are the subject matter expert they have the domain expertise they can be a very very good project manager if they understood and they 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 follow certain you know certain things on that perspective we started discussion with a lot of senior people and we found out you know to cover or to bring everybody in a one platform and deliver this you know this you know effectively project management we found out there are five competencies we need to definitely build so i called them a critical competencies what are those managing safety quality and risk it's absolutely important because a lot of people think oh project management why safety and quality obviously those who know pmi they know the safety and quality is a part of the pmis quality is and risk is a project manager knowledge area but safety is very very important because it is linked with direct link with the time so the because if you are not following the safety properly or you are not taking adequate measure you will lose your time and then obviously it will impact on quality and cost so project will be gone out definitely therefore we always say you know zero harm policy or we call talk about you know uh, production first but safety first this kind of slogans and there are a lot of rules regulation now implemented and on india is moving in a very fast way so you know recently there was a beach collapse because of the this issue is not safety that was a over excess load in the gujarat that particular cable stay beach that is a different matter but because of the safety a lot of incidents or accidents happen which could be fatal fatality means work stop inspection client will has double pressure at the site level so better we manage the safety very very and safety is not the responsibility of the project manager or the project team everybody's responsibility das sir will talk about that more he is the domain expert on that and risk is here project risk which is also involved the safety risk as well you need to do the real safety risk assessment before you start any work he will talk to you in later then planning stage planning is one of the key area. everybody knows planning in the world everybody even uh, my mom my aunt my grandmother everybody knows planning they are much planful they do a lot of day to day planning they know how to do planning everybody knows by planning but yeah what project management look for is strategic planning project level planning and works planning this is a total distinct area people don't understand people don't understand you know people don't understand means i don't i not say that people don't understand other people is not much aware of the importance of this three this three has a three different characteristics so planning means it's a holistic term so you need to understand what is strategic project management project and uh, project project management the baseline project planning and what is the works project planning the execution level if you do understand that you are very efficiently manage the project because sometimes the project manager say make make a detailed baseline in the day one of the project it is not possible at all not at all possible an indian contract is very good i read the indian contract for three client and everywhere they are now specifying within 28 days you submit a baseline with the initial baseline then within 60 days you update the program and make a detailed program because by that time you know the methodology you know the sequence you know the unknown thing in the project so you can plan accordingly so indian context is now is changing i have seen that transparent reporting reporting would be another term i added on transparent transparent means you should be clean okay you should say what you are seeing in the site you should not hide the progress not to the client not to your organization and progress is very important in project engineer planning engineer only call the project engineer or the site engineer or supervisor ask about the progress but they one day they give 5% progress next day they give 50% progress this is a big problem because they don't know how to measure the progress and report that's why in project level if people are working in a project engineer project supervisor 
they will be going one day they may not be going the path of planning engineer planning manager project control manager path but they may be going to a project engineer senior project engineer construction manager project manager project director level so they should know the basis of those things another topic i took contract administration it, it, it is probably very it is very very uh, unknown topic to you those who are having a contractual background they will understand see contract administration is talking about the pre contract the planning of the execution of various subcontractors vendors and all those things it's not about contract management and contract administration is totally different people don't understand even those are the those are the contracts engineer they get confused in that contract administrator can play a role of contract manager or contract management role obviously but it is a two distinct phase of the project life cycle but i took about contract administration because i it is a very very favorite subject of mine so i just want to give a share some glimpse of that you know it's not possible to you know share full knowledge in the or whatever knowledge i have in this two hour session is not possible but yeah i think last thing it is it is it is, it is a excellent uh, topic you know that we came out in a discussion people don't understand the interface and over and service they know the term they know the term but they don't know what they are supposed to do in this particular phase of the project interface between civil architectural mep interface between civil to system civil to or mep to system interface between the two organization and handing over access and service readiness in india service readiness concept is very very less because service readiness is taking the systems and then run the systems here most of the case the client run the system dmrc chennai metro or all the places but if you look at the hyderabad metro this is run by the elant under the elant is leadership run by the qlis so here service agents take a big role now the latest project in india the delhi to mirad that semi high speed it will be given to a private operator db doish brand they will run the ready so in that project people will talk about service readiness because it has a typical life cycle i have given a slides for that a graph for that to explain you that but obviously it will be detailed covered in the course okay when you go to the course so these five competencies that you identified it is it is not it is it is competence it is not knowledge here. those who know pm bog those who know axelos those who have done training like people like you know uh, there are a lot of senior people in this webinar those who knows those thing pmi standards they find out it is a knowledge area but we are talking about the competence this competence is, is real it is practical which will help you to deliver the work okay so this is the difference it is not a pmi focus pmi driven uh, pmp course it is a real course which will give you it will help you to understand these competencies and then explore because what will teach you in 20 hours course is not the end right i am also learning with you every day i am having so many certification but it's still i do lot of certification and i learn lot of new things so learning process is a you know it's a continuous so therefore with this the training course that we design for for 20 hours will give you the understanding of these competencies then you have to build your service yes, obviously i will be there to help you out and uh, our coordinator will be in contact with you for giving your questions giving your discussion with you and i i found out to design this code 20 hours is it's very tough but you know people in, in india or other middle east people don't want to commit for a more uh, more prolonged duration of course because of the other commitments their personal life non lot of things are happening consequently so because of that you know we have to make a compact program now i have out of this 10 competent five competency we have a 10 module design which i am coming next you will see you can see those things one by one after that once this uh, once we talk about a little bit more on this competencies but you will understand that better okay now i will i will uh, i will talk about the talk about the safety first and uh, mr das will explain there as a subject matter expert on the yeah thank you somrat once again let us go further details of this if competency part one part uh, just i will give you a overview it is not a uh, maximum of you you know um, because you people are working people and you are attached with some of the projects some of the companies and reputed companies also so uh, please uh, if you are having any question or anything put in a chat box and we will uh try to address all these things okay after this session so now going to, uh, further the managing safety hazard and risk effectively in this session we should know some essential things see first of all what is safety 
The question is, what is safety? Safety is nothing but a state where a person or a asset or environment or anything can be saved. The state means the condition, phys physical condition, psychological condition or material are being controlled so such a manner the people health or the individual or community will not be any harm. So that is called safety. And the safety is, you know, um, is in our blood, you can say. And whether we are applying or not applying, there is a different matter. But safety is in our blood. I mean, since our childhood, uh, we know our parents used to say, please look both sides of the road, then cross the crossing the road. So, you know, in from that stage, we know what to do to cross a road, isn't it? So from that, big, suppose a child, maybe three, four years child, he want to go to kitchen and want to do some cooking. As the parents, we're not allowing them. Why? Because it is not safe for them because they don't understand what are the hazards, what the risks are involved there. That, that safety starts from there. Safety starts from our house. Safety starts from our school. Safety starts from our organization. So this is very important thing because without the safety aspects, it's very difficult to overcome anything. Why it is important? First of all, it is important to reduce the your injury cost, your illness, your pain, your absenteeism, the turnover should be in time, increase the productivity time, increase the quality, it increase the employee's moral. In other words, safety is a good for business. Means if your project delivery is in safe way, that means you are you don't have any injury, you don't have any uh, downtime due to the illness of the employee. You don't have any productivity loss because due to the safety, some of the, uh, due to the not following safety, some of the maybe system collapse or something, you lost your time, production, everything, your quality also, uh, your, the quality work, what you want to do, that also lost. So these are the things in the protecting workers in the right thing to do means you are protecting the Team means not only the person who is working, the person who is involved in that particular process means the person who is working, the person who is supervising, the person who is supplying, the person who is uh, maybe doing the PMC, the person who has given you the job. So if you are protecting everybody, so that means that a teamwork and all the person involved for the particular process, everybody has to follow the safety. And without teamwork, the safety cannot take care. Some, but suppose a worker or workman is taking care of safety for this particular area and it is hazardous job, and suddenly you are entering in unsafely there. That means you are you yourself is a hazard for the particular work. So you have to follow the safety there itself. If the barricade is there, you have to move away from the hazardous area. So that way you can help the team to improve safety. So safety is a teamwork, excuse me. So that way, safety is very important. How it's done in railway projects, how it applies to railway projects, that I'll come in later stage, okay? And before going further, we should know, safety means not only by mouth, not only by our work, there should be something which is required to Take this your safety aspects further in the organization, in your project, in your day-to-day -day activities, everywhere. And for that, you have to have some documentation or, or paper is required to know the things, to do it in better way, to keep some records and all these things. There is a 5P. Uh, I am, because I am saying that keeping in my mind, and I'll request you also please keep these five 
just what 5p that is p my name is Prolai, that's why it is very easy for me to understand the p's uh, uh, the policy on his policy so may I request to just go through the uh, poll please first poll please on the safety Yes, sir. The poll is launched. Yeah. The poll, poll is launched. You can just poll it, please. Do you think the permit, yeah, permit to work system is necessary for railway project? So let us see the answer, how people are answering or giving their opinion. It is an opinion poll only. So Write in the chat box, put in the poll only, please. Please answer in the poll. Already sixty three percent already participated. Okay, uh, I think we can uh, you can end the poll. This poll, please. Yeah, poll two. So that means almost uh, eighty people have given the uh, answer, and out of eighty, seventy seven seventy percent is saying yes, and maybe some some person is telling no, and someone is telling not sure. Okay, fine. So please, uh, I'll, I'll come back to what is PTW and all these things. Okay, so uh, another one uh, poll we are having. Uh, the third one, can you launch this please? We are having another one poll on this particular because that. Yeah, it is policy essential for all, for any organization. Expecting more person, person to be to take part in. Please participate. I think uh, okay, sir. We can take the feelers and actually move forward also. Yeah, fine. Yeah, okay. Thank, thank you. <laughs> so see, the both both two polls uh, is giving an indication that maximum people knows what is policy, what is PTW. They, they are having some idea. At least they are having some idea. So five P's, out of five P's, first one is policy. Policy is a document which is being signed by the top management of the particular organization or particular project who have, is, is required as for the project requirement. Means Policy means where, how we'll manage the safety at, at the particular project size or particular organization means there will be some policy statement, there will be some com commitment, and what are the resources and how we'll execute that particular policy statement. So that is a policy. And policy is a document which represents a company or a project management team. Team views, mission, vision, that, that type of thing. On the basis of policy, company policy or project policy, then there is a detailed planning 
and safety is being taken care. In the planning stage, each and every aspects are being taken care. Roles and responsibility in HSC, in health and safety and environment. <laughs> what are the resources you are going to provide in safety for the project execution or project management? What are the things, uh, each and every stage, what are the safety aspects uh, to be followed for a safe execution of the project? How you will report, report how will manage, and what are the mitigation plan? What is the emergency plan? And all these things will be included in the plan stage. Then on the base of the plan, there will be separate procedures, like your, excuse me, your hot work procedure, like your confined space procedure, like your working at height procedure, like your um, working inside the trench procedure, PTW procedure, and other so on. This type of procedure, separate procedures are there on the basis of the safe that procedure, you will do the safe work. Then coming back to this PTW, PTW means permit to work. Permit to work. Uh, somebody is writing permit to work versus kickoff meeting. So there is this, this thing, two things are totally different actually. Permit to work means you are uh, what uh, kick off meeting that means they proceed to proceed to work, not permit to work. Permit to work is the you are allowing some of the particular thing, particular work. Suppose a person want to do some hot work, mean welding, grinding, gas cutting, like that, that, that thing. So you are allowing them to do the work in a safe manner. And the permit to work is a procedure where if each and every hazard and controls are in is mentioned and who is doing what are the things the roles and responsibility the competence everything is there and it is a control system permit to work and permit to work is, is required because to control a critical job you don't require any permit to work for your office work why because it's a stereotype work means Daily you are doing the same work. You know the hazard, you know the controls, and after putting up all the controls, you are working in your workstation. Okay, so that's why permit to work is not applicable for your regular work. Permit to work is applicable for a critical work and irregular work. Like, if you want to do any electrical maintenance in your office, obviously permit to work is required because it is not a regular job. Yet regularly, you are doing a switch off and on. That is a regular job. But when you want to do a particularly a shutdown job for an office, maybe DG shutdown or DG maintenance, you have to do a permit to work because that is a critical job. That is a job which is not a regular. So PTW permit to work is very critical to the railway project itself because railway project, I will come, uh, come to the area where all these permit to works are required. And after that, when you are doing the job as per your procedure, as per your PTW, as per, sorry, as per your plan, obviously there should be some validation or checking. Without that, you cannot, suppose you are doing a permit to work for a confined space. You have to have a checklist whether all the confined space conditions are in place or not. Somebody has to check. Somebody has to certify that thing. And then this has to be a part of the permit to work system, uh, the permit. Okay, some records, you have to keep these records, means suppose you are engaging a crane. Okay, whether this crane is fit for the purpose, means whether it is a, maybe not too much old, whether the maintenance of the crane is done, whether the crane is having the self-load indicator, or these are the things, that record must be there. Without that, you cannot, you cannot execute a project, the record, if in case of any unwanted situation, in case of any accident, when the investigation will be there, this all record will support you. This record will support you to prove that you are doing your work, you are doing a checking, you are doing your regular monitoring through that thing. So that's why the safety record is very important. Then comes the statistics, another one part of this validation. Suppose you may might have seen a project is achieved 1 million man hours. What is that? That means project has achieved the blood milestone, particular 1 million man hours work 
without any lost time injury or without any fatalities or without any major major incident like that so this statistics is very important you, you are projecting your company your work your project to the client to the outer of your periphery that is this statistics we are having and we are having a good record and it will help you in the future to recognize the people good work another way to recognize in a new getting a new contract or something so these are the thing is very important in the uh, project management that is a 5p please keep in your mind 5p and when we will come in a detail uh, course so this will be elaborated more further can you go to the further please yeah now how we are managing safety managing safety that there, there should be some standard see there is in india we are following some standard in uh, internationally we are following some standard overall international ilo it is applicable for all all over the world ilo standard international labor organization in geneva conference there is there was there are some uh, all the countries they have signed some mo and according to that that law has been made and every all countries are abide by that geneva conference that ilo conference that the outcome then osa osa is another one organization who gives the guidelines okay who gives the guidelines to the government yes these are the guidelines you have to follow to maintaining a good safety health great safety and health and see and see is a private organization that creates the excuse me voluntary standards which gives the voluntary standards and osa is the regulating government body who having a power to make it a occupational law standard standard into a law okay so osa is a guideline i'll come somebody is lighting that osa and iso i'll come in in that 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 area okay so these are the international some standard some guidelines we are following some of the um, you know the academic, academic organization is the internationally british safety council who generally give some of the um, thoughts on safety like some courses they are designed nibos same thing they have designed some courses to educate the people more i was same thing irsm they are in, internal institute of risk Professor, uh, yeah. can we take up some questions right now, please, so that you know uh, we can answer some questions if it is yeah. there. Just take up yes, one. Sure, sure. So I think somebody is uh, writing mainly the PTW. Okay, so uh, just I'll go back to the PTW once again. Uh, yes. So let me check if this chat works. Uh, one minute, please. Yeah, and uh, the, all these points for for everybody's knowledge, all these points are covered in detail in the uh, safety the that particular program that we are part of this curriculum uh, training program. So it will be in detail. It will be responded. You know, I know it is a very common topic and it's a very important topic to for the project manager to become a good efficient project manager. But yes, uh, uh, yeah, brother, uh, brother, yeah. you take one or two questions, then I'll I'll move it to because uh, uh, we have one, to finish. One, yeah. one good uh, question. I have got it. Uh, Mr. Ganesh Bala Subramani. So he has asked, is PTW via app? Yes, nowadays it is there in app. Some of the company, they have developed their app and it is an app, it is a totally software, in digitalized PTW, not in paper. Okay, right. Okay, so yeah, that type of uh, technology already this is there in market and some of them it, we are using some of the projects. It is there. Now I have got another one is uh, this was that I'll I'll come in after all. In the process PTW, there are three things: permit interviewer, permit receiver, and permit authority. Yes, this is this thing. These are the things we'll discuss in the detailed uh, in course material when we'll launch the course. In the course, it is there already. Right. So, uh, sir, I'll I'll ask uh, two questions and we can move forward from here. Yes, so, sure, sure, sure. Just two questions. Okay, so, to somebody. Uh, uh, one sir, minute. Yes, sir. I'll pick up the question. Yeah, so please, please. there's a question yeah. from Sheikh Hussain, which is related to uh, a very basic question. Is it uh, can civil, is project plan course meant for civil graduates or is it only for uh, 
electronics electrical graduates yeah, so please. this is a very basic question i think we can quickly answer this yeah i, I would love to i love to tell that answer okay please, yes, I'm not, go ahead, please. let me let me jump out on that sorry yeah, please, uh, the reason is it's a very good question see what i said it is a competency driven program it's not a discipline or not your engineering curriculum driven program project management programs are even though even pmi or pembok or everywhere excellence they are not talking about that you are a civil engineer mechanical can join no anybody can join who can learn the process learn the art and implement it so you are very much welcome my friend okay so uh, now sir we can move forward uh, we'll take up the question towards the last uh, after the presentation is done okay so i think dasar is having another few things to tell next slides probably yes. yeah yeah so uh, please go back to previous slides yeah so in india the same thing some of the authorities are they are like uh, dgms the director general of mine safety they are mainly taking care of the mine mine safety same thing is applicable at uh, this railway safety board okay there is they are the person who is controlling the railway safety director general of factory advice services and labor institute the dg dg firstly there is another one authority in every state there is a factory inspector they are mainly taking care of the safety part and if we are going further to the law and regulations see you can see my my guy somebody has written that osa is now transferred to standard sorry i'm very sorry to inform you that there is a two different thing osa is 18000 was is a guideline still it is valid as a guideline and standard if you are going for the international standard yes iso 45001 2018 is there and it is the standard which is being followed by all the nationalities iso 45001 is the only standard available for this safety uh, regulation okay and guidelines is osa there is a lot of guidelines are there like osa guideline that in if you are going to australia there is a different guideline if you are going to uk there is a hsc 64 64 like that so there are the several guidelines are there but standard is only one available it is the iso 45001 for safety okay so this is the difference between uh, osa and iso 45001 so in india there is a lot of uh things a uh, lot of regulations are there the one of the most uh, common regulation is factory act 1948 and it was applicable up to 1990 1986 uh, sorry 1996 before coming the building and other construction workers act then mines act it is 1952 dock workers safety health and that is applicable to dock mainly then child and adolescent labor act it is every year it is applicable contract labor regulation and that is also and it is also applicable indian electricity act 2003 now it is latest and the for railway project obviously the railway act is applicable since all the rules and regulation and act is applicable to maintain the safety and and just i want to remind you one thing this act regulation standards these are not the bottleneck these are the things which will take you further for safe execution of the project management please keep in mind it is not a bottleneck the people are thinking the some of the men even the management that thinking these are the bottlenecks sorry these are not the bottleneck these are the things which is helping you to give you a guide how to go ahead further uh, project execution safe execution yeah. okay next yeah, in this point in this point i'll just add something you know uh, the important is here that you should know this laws and regulation in a overview level or high level because obviously somebody safety person is there to advise you but at the end as a, if you are designated project manager if you are signing the documents you are signing authorized to sign the check and if you don't follow this these are the act so this is enforceable so therefore if something happened i have seen recently you might be behind bar it is an immediate risk it is going to happen is happening so that's why the importance is that you should know this point and if that's the reason you should follow in your site you know you advise your safety person to follow the sites yeah just to add with samrat it is not only mini links in recently in india some of the one of the biggest project in india the some project manager of the reputed company and the safety manager both, both are in behind the bar 
due to the mm-hmm. incident. You are right. Actually. You are right. It's happening yes. in Mumbai also. Recently, I heard. Yes. Yeah, you are right. I don't want to take the name. No, no, don't I'm take the name. Yeah, it's okay. So that's why. So it is. Please be careful on that. If anything wrong, it be beyond the law. You are working. That is a punishable offence. Okay. So next slide, please. Uh, managing safety. Why importance of safety in project management? See why it is required. First of all, everybody is having a right to work safely and to go home back safely. Means the, the way they came to work, same way they go to go back. That is a moral obligation right of each em- employee. Em- employer is having obligation to give that right to the employee. Workplace more efficient and proactive. By protecting your workers, you can reduce absentees. Because suppose if somebody is getting injury, he will be absent for three, four days. You can lose a skilled person for a couple of days. So your project production or productivity may be less. So that way you can <clears throat> more, more efficient and productive. Workers are more productive. When they are committed to safety, Suppose some, uh, some workers, if you are making them happy, they are uh, looking for the work in a safe way. Obviously, your production will be good and they will be committed to the safety. Save your business ma- money means you are reducing a down downtime by illness, by accident. Uh, yeah, by accidents. That way you can save your money. Legal objects, already this part we have discussed just now. Legal breach. If you are doing a legal business, if you are uh, taking shortcut, not making this, you will have a big penalty, you will have a prosecution or something like that. Even the senior executives of the company can be behind the bar. So law is uh, same for everybody. Uh, to attract investor and partnerships, demonstrate your commitment to the safety or sustainability. Sustainability, which can sustain a long, longer time. Are called corporate social responsibility. Then you can attract some investor who can invest in your project and you can get some partnership so because if your old record is good there is no incident there is no accident or the illness is very less like that though you can get more investment on this project customer can be satisfied if your record is good and and they can easily give you a job for the job retain the best employee this is another one thing i want to discuss suppose your uh, some of the project, each and every day, if there is an incident, the employee will be in fear. They have to think whether we are safe here. First, everybody wants to make them happy. They want to do the work in a safe way. They want to live longer. That's why they want to, they will think twice whether I should continue here or I should jump onto other company. So in that way, you can retain your employees also. Build trust, reputation, and plan to up each. Yes, it is a thing. If your safety record is good, your people are happy, you will get a good brand value, you will get a reputation to everywhere. Yes, that X company is doing well. They don't have an incident. They have re, uh, achieved 10 million man hours. And a, the community will accept you further. And long term benefit means suppose your safety record is good, you can secure your employee. You can secure your job. You can secure more job in long term. Your money you can save in terms of giving a compensation or like like that. So it is a long term benefit also in safety. If you are doing a uh, taking safety in your project management in an effective manner. Okay. Next slide, please. Now, safety in railway project. See, how it is applicable in railway project. See, I earlier I told that I'll discuss in how it is uh, done in railway project. See, railway project is a similar project, all other projects, almost similar. Yes, there is some criticality. There is some specification oriented job. Yes, there is something unique in railway project. Obviously, the, the safety system, Another thing will differ. Like railway, if you're going for a railway operation, the signaling system of railway operation is a totally different in other signaling system like roadways. Okay, 
So these are the things, there will be different and there will be different way of taking further. Uh, but the module, the skeleton is the same. Safety management is the same. Only the competency will be different. Only the unique part will be different. Only the critical part will be dealt in a different manner. So safety planning for the inception of project the design stage. Safety starts from the uh, day zero. Safety starts from the day zero. Please, when you are bidding a contract or in a designing stage, starts from there. Please keep in mind. I have seen some of the company and maybe some project manager is telling we don't have budget for the safety. So that is the wrong thing. That is wrong thing he's telling. The budget, the allocation and all these things, it is already there in the thing. Okay, so, so safety starts from the planning stage. A sufficient well-planned budget for HSC management must be allocated. This is another one thing. So a thumb rule in general, the overall 0.8 to 1% overall of the project, yeah, it depends on the project type, which project and where and all these things. So in general, 1% we are keeping for the HSC management system, okay? For implementation of HS, success, uh, execute the HSC management system. Selection of contractors, obviously, when you will give a job to some of the uh, contractor, you will not give a job who is having a bad safety record, who is having a four fatalities, you will not give a job, obviously. So please, that part also very important in the railway project itself. Skinning of workmen and conduct, and conduction of specific training. This is another one important thing. The person who is having experience in the other area, huge experience, you will not take him in it. Because now, you know, already someone told the competency level. If the competency level of the workman who work in a railway project is not there, so you obviously will not take. The contractor who is supplying your workforce who has not worked in a railway project earlier, you will not obviously will not give that. So that way you have to screening the workman so, uh, some of the job is of excavation, yes, that's, it is similar to other projects, you can take them. So, that is very important, the screening of the people and the specific training. Particular job, you have to train them first and then you put in a job. Then only you can get a safe execution of the job. Yeah. So, and every activity must have proper method statement, standard operating procedures. Already I have told you this procedure. Procedure must be there, not only HSC procedure, not only safety procedure, even the method statement, the how you will execute the job, how you will operate the particular segment. Suppose excavation, what is the method statement? How will do the excavation? How will dispose the, <coughs> the excavated soil or excavated deb the debris? It's all the things should be there in the method statement, not only excavation, each and every st uh, stage of work, there must be a method statement. And the method statement, as per the method statement, how we do the job. Before execution job, you have to do a risk assessment and risk management procedure. So it must be in place. Okay. So the risk assessment and risk management, this is a huge chapter. And some of the things, it will be covered in your uh, course also, in upcoming course also, it will be there. So when we will discuss in the, that course, the risk management or risk assessment, how it is, we are doing and all these things that will be discussed further. What are the high risk, some of the high risk assessment that I have listed down, there is a uh, huge number. So, in but mainly in the railway project, traffic management, because uh, nowadays all these, especially the metro projects, it is inside the cities and where the traffic movement, public, public, everything is there. So we have to do a proper traffic management. There should not be a hindrance of the traffic. So that way, we have to do a traffic management plan and all these things. Then it comes up just after survey, when we are doing the excavation, we have to have an excavation plan and excavation and trenching to it. And these all the things is, it starts the excavation planning, starts from the planning stage. And the safety factor also considered in the, the from that stage to the execution. Tunneling, you know, the TBM, tunnel boring machine we are using. Sometimes we are doing the other method also for tunneling. So this way, it is very high risk job. And obviously, we'll have a heavy lifting. 
heavy lifting, uh, launching the tunnel boarding machine launching and all these things is there. Working at height is one, it is a one of the critical part like other projects, other domain, overhead protection, some of the areas, you have to have some overhead lines, some even a bumping, there is a bumping effect also, that also, uh, they are overhead protection you have to take, lifting equipment and gears, you have to, you, without that, we cannot execute the project, all of the things are the very high risk and risky activities. And that, and each and every category need to be dealt separately. Now, risk assessment and risk management. See, it is already have told the risk assessment is management. There is a part we have covered in the that uh, the twenty hour session. Risk like, first you have to know the what is risk and how each see in this world there is no job is there which does not have any risk. Even if you are writing a paper, means writing an exam, that time there is a risk that the pen, the ball, the ball of the pen can come out and it may bleed in your paper. That is a risk also. Before writing a paper, we are checking our pens. So we are doing the risk management there. So this way, each and e every job, even a uh, team making, there is a risk and we're mitigating the risk. After that, we're doing the job. Leaks filtering whether the risk is manageable, whether other control is there, whether it is beyond our control, that filtering we have to do. And according to that, the risk ever, and the degree of risk, if we take the risk, how much severity, how much damage will be there. So that evaluation we have to do according that, because each and every risk we have to manage. And then we can do the risk management. How, after evaluating the risk, as for the category, we have to put the controls. It's effective controls, how to prevent it. Sometimes we can prevent, sometimes we can reduce, sometimes we can shift to some, because how we can shift, take an example. Suppose a company, uh, X company is not having a experience in the piling job. We are giving a job to the company, Y, who is having a huge experience in piling. That means the risks of company X we are shifting to company Y. That way we can changing the risk. We can shifting the risk from one area to another area and reducing the risk in that way or preventing the risk. The cost benefit analysis we have to do in the risk assessment part also. The, if we are putting some this type of controls, what is the cost benefit and how it is helping to the project execution this way. The output of the safety risk management procedures in one group or phase to control the keys of risk of the project. So means the risk passage management procedure is a group of plans. It is not only a single thing. It is a group of chain of things need to be brought together and mitigate the risk. That way we have can manage the risk. And this risk management is not a easy subject. It is a huge subject. And some of the areas we will cover in the work. Uh, training session, 20 hours training session. So next please. Sir, uh, Pralai sir, I would request yeah. you to kindly pace up as uh, we, it's already 8.45. Yeah. I have requested for an extension till 9.10. Yeah. Let me look at finishing. Yes, finish. sure. Yeah, okay. Next, next slide please. I think you have covered. Yeah. So this is well, yeah, another, you have covered, yeah, you have covered yeah. most of the things correctly. Yeah. I have covered most of the, just a typical exam, example I'm giving here. Okay, uh, just a back, uh, some typical example like your utility drivers are for Dewal. So you have to, there is some steps you have to follow. If you are following the steps like identity, the utility, the approval, permit, shutdown, then road, road safe, signage, safety, <coughs> arrangement, and all these things, then obviously you can do a, Better utility diversion without any uh, hazard, without any harm to anything, any people or any utility or any environment or anything. So these some of the steps you have to follow. You have to think because this is one of the critical area in this uh, metro railway project or any railway project. Then excavation. There also you need a approval. You have to have a approved drawing. You need a permit. Permit the arrangement. The atmospheric condition you have to check because you are want to uh, dig a hole or a excavation. 
means there may be some atmospheric hazards are there that has to be assessed that has, has to be and accordingly you have to control it then you have to put a barrier signage around the excavation area so you are protecting the people from falling hazard you are protecting the other vehicle in uh, falling then you have to have a slope protection it depends upon the soil uh, quality view watering arrangement maybe if you are going in deep excavation there may be some seepage water some water may come from the existing utilities you have to have some emergency if anything happens in the pit how will you rescue the people these are all the things specific things is there to mitigate the risk to control the risk and to do the job in a safe way in that way we can save our project we can save uh, the, the effective project management can be done so this is the overview just i have given it is a huge subject once again i'm telling and some of the part obviously it will be covered in your training session so i'll now i'll hand over to samrat once again for further yeah. thank, thank you, you sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, don't don't skip the slide let me start from this slide no that's the reason i said that the safety first and then the rest thing will come see guys a lot of you are you know i'm i'm, I'm just following the chats while while polar sir was explaining see i am really really surprised and really happy that people are thinking so positively nowadays on safety sides and and that makes a difference you know a cultural difference in the organization cultural difference in the country's growth if you see this this slide why i said stick on this slide see this slide is nothing but he has done the what activities to be done and what activities to be ensure for a uh, unhindered work or for the dewall excavation or uh, underground station excavation this is the activities which is we should plan you know so safety when the safety engineer is sitting coming to you to understand the activities from the method statement the quality control guy should work as a team that's why safety safety is a team work he may not be knowing the time cycle of uh, how to you know the swing swing time of the excavator how how much bucket capacity and all those things that's the time planning engineer should help him into understanding that how many days he need to be keep the barrication on so accordingly he write in a permit so that's why safety if you consider the safety it is prime importance for me i have spent my 21 years most of the time in you know now i am sitting in a, some headquarter but other places i sit in the project level so i have seen how safety can happen and that's the way safety also needs planning and this is the thing i want to tell message them to send you okay now i'm going to my part which is uh, the next competency is planning actually i started my session so planning competency is think you know if you can go to the next slides planning competency is what you are going to do that is in advance you are thinking like the safety example and what do you know by plan plan is the outcome of a planning process you know the planning can be done in a paper you know sit, five people sitting in a coffee shop can do a planning and that's the way you know the site supervisor should do planning with the site engineer so it's not that you have to go to an office and sit and you know have a, a, a big cup of tea and do the planning you can sit anywhere and do the planning the planning or a plan should replace three two things three w two h i say what how who when and how much this is the basic answer should come out out of the process planning process and you know what what is what what is what is talking about the scope how is talking about the work breakdown structure those who know work breakdown structure is the hierarchical decomposition of the things and uh, when it is the timeline who is the resource who how you do that and how much you know budget at the end every job needs a budget or a cost or those things now category of planning is very simple i told in the first time strategic business baseline and work related static planning importance is for the high, for the you know critically assess the organization growth it is done in the corporate levels so organization growth organization five years plan is a long term plan baseline planning is done at you know it is a process uh, initiated at the starting of the project so it is a project level or a business level business level also you know when you have more than five projects running by a business that he will do the program level planning because as i said the uh, program is nothing but the combination number of projects together it makes a program so baseline planning can be done at program level baseline planning can be done at a projects level and then the works planning it is pure operational or execution level planning what i said just now the the, the, the site supervisor can talk to the labor or site engineer can talk to the labor and do the planning and the draw you know find out the milestone level of planning and send that information to the planning team so this is my planning for the next week that is the way they should do the look ahead plan look ahead plan is the next topic but look ahead plan should be done by that level you know it's not that the planning engineer dividing the target and giving the plan it will be other way around sometimes is not happen in a reality i know that reason why it is not happening 
But yes, that should be the right process of doing that. Next slide, please. Yeah, how done in railway project is? I'll tell you the very simple process I mentioned that, you know, railway project is a very typical, very high value project. So you cannot just come and do a planning. As a project manager, you are planning manager, just come and do a you know, plan, place up paper. No, for that, you have to look at the tender plan or tender schedule submitted during the bidding. From there, you develop an initial plan in 28 days, which will be basically up, uh, progressively, uh, progressive elevation I'm kind of talking to relate which is basically initial plan is nothing but you know ex expand the initial plan done in a tender stage everybody know tender plan tender schedule from there another 60 days time is given once you submit develop the detailed plan and from the detailed plan you should get do the look ahead schedule and then revise and recovery schedule your project is running late and all so tender plan as i mentioned that the tender plan the progressive elaboration is the thing which will be i told you in the i think i know i don't touch base the progressive elaboration Progressive level continuously improving or detailing out a plan as more detailed or specific information you are getting from site level, your understanding of the subject, your understanding of the terrain, everything. And rolling wave planning is we implement when you do the, you know, it is a kind of progressive planning. You go to the further level to the last level, work package level, where you do at the site level, where I said the work related planning. And WBS work breakdown structure, WBS is nothing but work breakdown structure. It is a deliverable oriented hierarchical decomposition of your deliverable or scope. And work package is the last level of the uh, work breakdown. Just WBS just consider the organization structure, okay? You have organization chart, top is project manager, first level is, you know, your uh, construction manager. And under that you have your th three sections, your three section in charge, under that your three senior engineer, each section has having and then you have the site engineer and then you have the site supervisor. Site supervisor role or level is the work package level. Under site supervisor, direct labor. We don't consider labor as in, that is a, that is a direct cause and this is an indirect cause. Indirect is your company hired as a direct labor is which would be probably hired by the subcontractor or something. So in that category, if you see the organization chart, the work package level is nothing but the supervisor who is standing at the reporting to the uh, site engineer. Next slide, please. The next competency, as I said in that, in the third competency is the reporting, reporting effectively. So for reporting effectively, there is two way of reports. One is a contractual report and one is a requirement of a stakeholder. Stakeholder means the project manager. This report, basically, this is the area where project manager involvement is less, okay? He just keep, okay, somebody is telling to slow the space, but I, I do understand because everybody's time is a matter. Okay, let me try to, <laughs> then I need to, you need to give me some more time, uh, just that. Okay, the reporting area here, project manager will see from the top, you know, he we'd call it a bird's eye view, okay? Report, he is not preparing any report, right? He is overseeing and taking a decision because he is taking the decision based on your report. So your report should be accurate and it should be transparent. You should not hide information. That's why when you're giving to client, I expect you to give the same transparent way of reporting to your client as the same way you are doing to your project manager. But some point of time, project manager said, okay, hide this information, which is again unethical. It's unethical, but sometimes project manager do for a for a particular reason. And you know, if there is a lot of argument I had with a long time, and you know, they said, you know, customization is allowed. I'm customizing my reports. Okay. If you are the project manager and you are customizing or hiding in the name of customization, if you're hiding the information, then you expect the same culture in your organization. So your site supervisor will give the same thing to site engineer, site engineer will give to their manager and site manager will give to the planning department. Then everything will be, you know, there will be two level of reports. One is the real report, one is the fake report. But yeah, when that's why it is very important that, you know, this is the thing, you, if, you are, if you are going through this effective project manager, co-project management goals, I expect you to follow a transparent reporting system because the PMI is having ethical. I, I don't do any, I don't encourage or don't do any ethical things in the project in terms of reporting. There are certain things people do which, which you know, which circumstances dictates, but you know, as a project engineer level or as a site person level, you should not hide things. You know, it is create a lot of problems later on. We can understand that in, in, in next, uh, you know, I'll talk about those in training session because it is be very difficult to cover everything now. And then another important point is communicating the schedule. How you communicate the schedule to your team? You know, there is a process. Every day, deep daily progress report has to be done. So the project manager knows that he needs the report daily morning, but the time cycle, 
you need to understand how important this communication because if you don't communicate the report the actual progress status timely and accurately with the matrices the planning department will do mistakes planning people are sitting in the office they are not sitting standing with you in the project or execution of the job they are coming often to the project site they are talking to you but right feedback should be there on right way okay that is the reason can you go to the next slide yeah so what i said you know to, to give a right progress progress measurement uh, uh, right report a transparent report to a management or client you should know the measuring technique how you should measure the progress if i i worked as a planning manager several years in the beginning i used to take a orientation session with the site engineer not the supervisor level it is very very difficult to go to that level so i talk to them and tell that you know this is the progress measurement for this activity and these are the steps you can follow and give me the right impact and 95% time i get the right feedback people when you explain people what are the progress how the progress measurement has to be done for the particular work sometimes physical progress measurement sometimes linear ways measurement there are a lot of ways how to do it sometimes milestone basis then they will do it so progress measurement is a some which is in the railway industry basically i have seen in middle east and india basically progress measurement is very critical when you write the baseline i if i when i develop the baseline plan i write this is the progress measurement technique the this will be you no know, start finish ratio method will be applicable for uh, for a lump sum activities something will be physically pile pile cap substructure will be something different way so i i decide the which method has to be applied to which element of work this is the right way and you write in the plan so you should know the there are main four type of progress measurement methods discrete method approximate method level up method and expert judgment expert judgment the supervision opinion is a very high level you know it is only only the senior people can give the right feedback on that you know and for that you need experience you, that's why i said in the beginning somebody they will tell 10% next day they will tell 20% because they are judging judgment also is is value is as a value when when you do properly level out of it basically it's mainly on the work productivity and work hours credit is it's most mostly done on the design side when you manage a design big design program you should know this thing apportionment is equivalent method weightage average formula based on the and the cost ratio based on that you divide your scope of work and do the uh, do the weightage the weightage has to be agreed with the client if it is a client measurement system and cost ratio it is very simple if you have the boq cost you can make the ratio of the ratio of the wbs level and then you can split it this will be detailed it will discuss in the in the training session probably i can do a simple mathematics also to give a clear idea to the to the to the site engineer and the planning engineer or those those who are joining the session uh next slide please the next one is contract administration the the next competency contract administration is a process where you plan a contract create it put it to work and ensure it advances the goal so that means here it is it is a pre contract phase okay before the project uh, be, you know pre contract phase means before the contractor is employed so in you if you are a main contractor for you it will be a sub contractor you are a client for you it will be the main contractor so this is the role uh, you need to understand that okay it doesn't mean that for employer the pre everything is pre contract because employer will do the contract administration in the pre contract stage then they the issue the tender then the they appoint the contractor then the post contract will start but for you when you are a contractor you got your you got your pre contract means you are doing it for your sub contractor you are defining a package like the, the sub said you want to transfer it is for the piling it's a very second pile it's very critical work you want to transfer to a specialist vendor so you you know what are the risks on that you define the risks you make a plan that is you according to your plan the contract document the sub contract agreement and you do it so that is contract management planning and obviously do the negotiation negotiation is a very critical uh, thing in this phase win win negotiation what i told win win scenario why it is important obviously it allow you to monitor and control the project risk poor contract administration leads to disagreement and dispute in project execution stage that's why i put in bracket it's very important to understand that huh? dispute can go to any level project could be stopped and it has lot of i'm not going to discuss that you know it is a different matter but the bottom line is employ employing a proper and professional contract administrator as a regardless of the size of the contract complete success you, you will have more profitability you will ensure that you know a proper contract administrator or contract manager is deployed at a site 
you will ensure that your property is not going to lot. lot of people said you know why you are paying so much of money to contract administrator and contract manager the reason is that they protect the profitability it's a fact i am a planning manager you might be a project uh, project manager you may be a project director but at the end whenever i have seen the project is going lost we go and tell them boss look into it do some claims find out where you can you know come to a different understanding this is a typical i explain this contract administration contract management contract management and contract administration two role one person can play two roles again this is a confusion in the lot of people have the confusion do i hire a contract manager or contract administrator or i hire a contract manager or contract engineer no you don't need contract administrator contract manager separately this is a phase of their role so a senior person can do the both role contract administrator deals with lot of high value procurement area where his knowledge is little bit more required contract manager role is you know it is something different you know it is if you are you know managing the managing the projects for is as a project engineer or uh, for long time you have a particular domain expertise on the subject you can act as a contract engineer or contract manager because you know the particular aspect but overall holistic view contract administrator got the overall holistic view so that's why i feel contract administration is a separate competency you know a lot of people you know contract engineer you are doing a piling work after a certain point of time you might shift you know why i am doing the site work i want to go to the office based job that point of time you can find if i go to the you can join as a subcontractor engineer to any of the client everybody knows now it is excel and word so obviously if your excel and word competency is little which is another one essential competencies by the way i have not mentioned that i thought everybody knows this thing if you have a if you have a code experience on the piling or if you have a code experience on the you know uh, construction of a uh, pick us to up or element so you after a certain period of work you can go and uh, find a job where your competency will fit as a subcontractor engineer or subcontractor uh, manager role so therefore contract administrator is a competency which will help you to essentially change your role from one to another when you gain a competency you are competent in the particular role and you can think about other things and or you gain a competency for a particular specific role and move into that role that's the reason of you know competency driven discussion yeah next and last competency that i put it sorry i, I have just added some of the contract document because you know i this is a typical thing but this will be covered in the course details i have seen across the middle east and india that contract is very in mostly is a five volumes and what are the content of those volumes i have just noted out it is it is very simple thing all of you are knowing that volume 5 is the drawing volume 4 is the specification specification and where employee requirements are noted volume 3 is the preamble the method statement and bill of content is volume 2 is the form of tender and all those things we feel that volume 1 is a general rfp bond insurance and all those coverage will be there preamble and all those things so it is very common so we, yeah i'm sorry i'm skipping bit fast because you know i have to cover and hand over the floor this is another important thing i just want to this will be in detail i'll teach in the class but this is very important you should understand what delivery method your project has adopted whether as a design bid build design build epc and design build operated design bid build means it is basically item date contract as well employer is designing the thing they are bidding and they are building asking the contractor to come you can see the you can see the see the understanding see the project owner is the employer he put a design company design company did the designing it has gone to rfp then the contractor and came contractor on board the subcontractors and deliver the job then design build is something different project owner given the contract to they did a they do the high level design based on that he issued a specification he given to a company who design and build taking the full responsibility epc is for that detail epc I, I, there is a the, while copying the picture there is a feed content engineering it is not covered in the diagram i'm sorry for that but feed is project owner first allowed to do the feed content engineering design from that they will do a detail design and then they will tell the they will appoint the contractor who will price for that engineering procurement and construction and here also they will do engineering based on the design they will do detail engineering that's why it is epc is engineering and other one is d for design and design build operate is a very very rare uh, india i am not sure any project is going on in railway but it is coming up in barin barin metro is under uh, bidding now it is under dob model for 30 years doha metro also with long term design design but it is not dob model it is a different model 
that is a dob model where design build and operate so design build will be the 10 consortium is now appointed there one of the companies are famous lnt in just to just name it so what will happen they will put the pricing and they will appoint the operator operator will come under that it's the same way of uh, the uh, hyderabad who those who know hyderabad qolis and uh, uh, qolis and lnt model the same way operator will come and work for the design and build company okay but this will will detail discuss in the session i i think i'll keep the slides in there also but in more detail explanation how the roles and responsibility of the each organization in this i'll cover in the detail okay next please the last competency probably and here yeah this is a topic you know this topic has thinking lot to put this topic in the in a presentation form i have put something here and then there at last moment i had to i do the rds and cmrs process for metro i just added that point just to remember for then i can develop the detail session for that see why it is important not only design and construction tnc plays a integral role for the project you know and going to tnc before that i talk about the interfaces interfaces between the interdiscipline interfaces is very important and then tnc time is if there is no interface then tnc will be failing 100% for this interface and handover people should understand the contractual obligation so you should have an understanding if you are a tnc engineer your first role is not only look at the procedure policies and the you know, technical uh, standard you should understand the contract also is very important how the access will be handover or what will be the, what if, if what if scenarios will come more here then back end integration process back end integration process is a pure planning process where you know you, the date is given boss i need the system testing commissioning to be start on the 5th of this uh, january from that you backward calculate and when you start the first first system first test you know there is a very kind of a dynamic test static test dynamic test then integration test so you should start the dynamic static test on the according to that sequence individual system testing then it will go to the overall system testing so that's why you, this backward integration is nothing but the planning and relevance relevance is, as i said the pure relevance is work your hand over hand over your timely access to the parties and work completion and hand over of the into the employer now how it is done in railway overall delivery life cycle is process here it is a very 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 complicated matter if you if i go and tell you the rds of testing commissioning phase in rds so what is the requirement what is the requirement in cmrs this it will take hours and hours and i am not the right person to talk you know to be very honest i am not competent to talk about more about cmrs and the rds it is a very specific thing uh very very specific thing so in my course i will give you a overview i'm i'm very honest on that i know how, how what are the tests to be done i know how the process how you know the high time cycle as a planning manager i have done those things as a as a expert i have done those things but but thank you thank you ramesh thanks for your compliments <laughs> just i saw the message but i am not competent i am not competent to explain you in detail the cmrs because i met some people who are very senior i was really lucky to understand the process for them but so i and same thing in middle east we call iso and isa independent safety observer and independent safety assessor they will do the same process in middle east i don't know what about happening in europe i cannot tell that but in these two country i can give you the these two region these two geographics i can tell you the detail in how that now i'll tell you the something which is very important for you to understand the last slide for me sorry i'm still learning you see this slide nobody will teach you what is after happening after construction see if you just carefully look at the diagram okay first one is construction and tnc tnc is part of a construction phase i i think you guys have no doubt but after this happened what is happening because you don't know right the con the client taking is the railway in their own hand and running the show okay isi is seal for seal for means okay gi4 okay gi4 system that then, then it's then it's uh, isi is available in india as well so it's good so what is happening that in the mobilization stage this is the next stage immediately after the testing commissioning stage even this is a parallel i have in my projects in riyadh metro and doha metro and dubai this is a parallel stage the operator is appointed there he come and start working with you guys he he witness the testing commissioning because he is one of the part of the handing over taking over process that process is change from client to client the process is going to change from client to client and uh, because of that you know the contract is defined in such a way so when in this mobilization state basically what they do they make a transition plan they tell client how i'll deliver the project in india we don't know this because client manage himself except we uh, except in hyderabad metro qlis did that and probably the dodge one will do in the 
in the semi high speed so then they create a target operating model how you deliver your operation and maintenance and the main thing they do it the it and system integration implementation plan then they will create the then they will hire the people they train them and then they do the readiness planning the readiness planning means they will demonstrate before getting the cms cms testing cms certification they will do the demonstration here is the cms process is coming cms will witness the system is safety safe and enough and passengers is completely safe to run the uh, services then they give the final approval and then the certificate will come so client documentation is part of that when you submit the actually i should put the client documentation so it's up because client documentation so it starts when the testing commissioning starts they make a lot of list of documents that have to be developed and given to isa after isa somebody said that isa certification is isa certification is required in india also i now just remember the person isa certification is done and then the say, document will go for the cms or final endorsement on the final endorsement is done then the project will kick off okay and then this transition period is again you guys don't know because client is running transition period is the there must be some caveat in the safety cases or the you know the documentation prepare so transition phase the system will not run in a 100% rams design space it will run with some restriction so over a period time this stabilize the operation and then it is go to the business as usual then when the people is running you know full capacity so this is the entire life cycle is linked with the service readiness we we finish in one stage another stage will come immediately but they are very much interdependent interface and handover is key thing here actually okay with this probably i have exceeded my time and now i think it's time for uh, time for uh, sumit to talk about no there is some more slides actually for me as well okay so uh, we can uh, what we can do is that we can uh, i'll i'll quickly uh, explain the uh, course yeah you can go ahead i take your input yeah, exactly 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 yeah so uh, uh, so uh, there are two elements which uh, i wanted to discuss as we talk about the course so first is the methodology which i think uh, samrat sir and prolay sir uh, explained you very uh, very beautifully and the second part is the perspective so that is where the the uniqueness of this particular course comes into play so this course is not going to be like any other project management course as emphasized by samrat sir and prolay sir during their entire presentation so uh, so how this is going to be different for all of us so uh, we have structured a very interesting program for you across 20 hours so there will be uh, each session we'll be having 10 sessions of 2 hours each uh, completely live online taken up by uh, our master trainers uh, on uh, we plan this on weekends saturdays and sundays so it does not hamper your working schedule so classes will be conducted from 7:30 pm to 9:30 pm indian standard time on saturdays and sundays the structure of each session will look at uh, we'll talk about uh, initial 10 to 5 15 minutes we'll look at the topics or if there are any recap from the last sessions around 60 to 70 minutes we'll talk about the the uh, methodology and the theory 20 to 30 minutes we'll talk about a uh, relevant example and scenario or case study discussion so that the whatever you are learning is uh, is uh, related to the uh, the the practical aspect of project management implementation uh, last 10 to 15 minutes of those 2 hours will be dedicated to faqs and question answers and each session will uh, continue like this so this is how we have structured the the delivery uh, on this particular course program i'll quickly uh, take you through uh, all the 10 session the first session would be around project management where uh, i think uh, uh, samrat sir has already explained the organizational project management uh, components of project and their relationships project program portfolio and operations second session will talk about planning and project management we'll talk about progressive elaboration on this rolling way planning look ahead planning there will be a case study on project plan demonstration third session will be on scheduling and master scheduling where we'll touch base various tools on schedule development how to create schedule what are the types of schedule what are the levels of schedule there will be a case study master schedule demonstration by the experts uh, fourth session will be on how to track physical progress and do performance reporting so how to measure the pro work progress what kind of progress reports are there what kind of reports are there how to design a customized report what are the key points to be considered how to develop a performance dashboard what are the key elements of a performance dashboard balance code score uh, scorecard and followed by a case study on how to demonstrate a progress report uh, 
um, there will be a case on elevated metro project that we are trying to bring in. So this will the session four will uh, focus upon on physical progress and performance reporting. Uh, session five will be on cost planning and control. Uh, so what is cost planning? How to do cost estimation, budgeting? How to determine a particular budget? How to develop cost budget? How to do cost control? And there will be a demonstration of EVM report. So uh, there will also be a case study. So if you if you're uh, seeing this very carefully, each of the session is backed by a case study or an example. So whatever we'll be teaching will be very uh, railway specific, metro specific, industry specific, so that you could take maximum advantage out of it. Session six will be on resource planning and management, where we'll be talking about various levels of resource planning, uh, how to plan man, uh, man do man, manpower planning, rostering and principle of, uh, of roster. There will be a case study to demonstrate how to create roster for shift based staff based upon requirement. This will be very, very useful to you. Uh, session seven will be on contract administration, where we'll talk about the role of a contract administrator, what are his roles, responsibilities, what are construction contract documents, common contract delivery method, what are what is variation order, change management, claims management, which is very important aspect of a contract. So we'll talk about, uh, we'll have a case study on demonstration of change management process at working levels. Session eight will be about operational readiness management. Uh, we'll talk about how to plan operational readiness. We'll talk about OR plannings. Uh, we'll talk about case studies on operational readiness plans for metro industry. Uh, session nine will be on safety hazard and risk assessments. We'll look at the uh, uh, practical approaches and processes of all on hazard identification. There'll be a, a case study on demonstration of conducting risk assessment uh, in metro projects. So we'll cover excavation, working at height, working with plants and equipments, three aspects we'll cover. Session 10 will be on next generation project manager. So what is new coming up in project management, which can be incorporated in railways and metro. So we'll talk about agile, agile will scrum, uh, lean concept, lean manufacturing, what are the principles of lean thinking, and there will be a final assessment test. So this assessment test will be, so uh, let me talk about a uh, little bit about the assessment right now. So uh, let me just, uh, okay, so, just allow me one uh, 10 seconds, please. Let me. Yeah, you can exit the screen. Yeah, correct. So, yes, so uh, we'll, yes, so. So, let me talk about the. Uh, program highlights here uh, about the course. So the beauty of this course program is, uh, so are you able to see my screen? So yeah, we can see. So the key highlights of the program are that it's gonna be weekend and online classes. Uh, class recordings would be there in case you miss uh, any of the sessions. Uh, there will be a good uh, networking opportunity with the fellow uh, working professionals. And as you've seen uh, the, the quality and the experience of our trainers. So you'll be learning from the world's best presently uh, uh, who, have, who have more than 20 years of each of uh, our experts are gonna be having 20 plus years of experience in project management uh, and uh, related uh, uh, industry. So uh, who should attend? So this program we've designed for working professionals who have minimum three years experience in construction rail projects. Uh, even service industry background people, professionals who are from facility management, operational project management, even retail project implementation knowledge, metro, rail, ONM engineers can attend this course program to do a career transition. Engineering graduates, diploma holders uh, of any discipline are welcome to join this course program. So there is no uh, specific uh, educational background that is needed. You can be from civil, mechanical, electrical, electronics, computer science. Everyone is welcome uh, and they can learn uh, project management. Uh, we've already looked at this. So uh, important information, we're looking at starting this from 26th of November. Uh, uh, class timings will be 7.30 to 9.30 PM, uh, Saturdays and Sundays. Assessment, so a very important point I would like to talk about is that how would we, we be conducting an assessment? There will be a multiple choice based assessment. And also during the project, uh, trainers would be evaluating your 
engagement and your interest into the whole program to uh, uh, to assess your uh, uh, skills and competencies that you develop during the course of course tenure so combining these two uh, uh, we will award you a certificate so you need to score minimum of 60% to get a certification so now coming to the certification uh, railway academy is proud to announce that we have a collaboration with tuv so i'd also like to share uh, uh, a little uh, so uh, i hope uh, you is there anybody who does not know what uh, who, uh, tuv is please type in the chat if if there is anybody uh, who is not aware about what tuv is please type in the chat okay so i think majority of the railway sector professionals are very much aware about the, the tuv certification that uh, is uh, that that is going to be uh, on this so uh, we are looking at uh, uh, awarding a tuv certification uh, for this course program so uh, students have to qualify an assessment which will be set up by tuv uh, south asia and they with uh, once they qualify the tuv assessment they'll be awarded a certificate of completion by tuv so so you will get a railway academy certification as well as you'll also get a tuv certification that that is a paid certification but very closely in integrated with our course program so this uh, by attending this course program you will get a certification which is uh, globally recognized and very much respected this is one of the very important aspect of per, per, of this training program because uh, we have tuv certification very much respected for the rail industry uh, apart from this uh, i would like to also share the 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 offers that we have so uh, there is a special discount offer we are uh, running till 20th of november so this course uh, course is priced at 16520 inclusive of gst so for people who are international uh, attend uh, for international uh, participants uh, this comes out to be close to about uh, two hundred dollars. Uh, there's a payment link on your screen. You can uh, uh, you can click to uh, uh, join join and enroll the course program. We are also offering group discounts. So if you are registering in a group of three, there is a discount. Six to ten, there is a discount. Ten plus corporate offer, there are there is a discount. Uh, apart from that, people who'd like to pay on an EMI model, they are most welcome to join this. Uh, so I've shared. They can join with 8,600 and pay the rest over the next 30 days when the course is being delivered. Uh, how to avail group discounts and uh, if you have any queries, how do you uh, contact us? So you can contact us on the WhatsApp number shown on the screen or email us at inquiry at Railway Academy. So we, we are, uh, we'll respond and we'll connect with you to resolve your queries and uh, uh, guide you to enroll for this course program. So. Uh, this is how we have structured the course program. If you have any questions, you can write to us. And I would request for one particular, uh, I have a request that uh, we'll be in the coming days as we proceed with the course launch and enrollments, I would request you to kindly follow our LinkedIn, YouTube, and uh, Facebook pages. The, the QR codes are on your screen. You can scan it with your mobile camera. And you'll go to the page, just follow it because uh, course brochure, course prices, course offers. If there is any change in dates of uh, class commencements, everything will be announced onto our LinkedIn and Facebook pages. The, the recording of this particular session will be available for your view on our YouTube channel so that people who, uh, who somehow had to uh, miss the session because it, one, it got extended and maybe they, they would have had some errands to run. So, uh, you can you can please uh, uh, join us on our social media handles and uh, connect with us. So uh, with this, uh, let me see if we are getting some question. Yeah, I did just questions are there. I remember one question from someone who asked for is this useful for the PMI PDOs? Yes. Once the, T, uh, the TUB accreditation or even the course certificate is given by Lillaway Academy, you can upload an I am a PMP, so you upload it. And if it is PUB, there is no question about it. You can easily claim 20 hours PUD, uh, uh, PDU or CPD, whatever you say. Okay, so any other questions? So this is this price inclusive of TUB? Yes. Uh, 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 so this is the, we have, we, have, we have included an initial TUB price into it, uh, which may subject to change in future, but we'll keep you notified. But as of now, the course price, includes a tentative certification fees of TUV. So uh, 
for people who are not aware about TUV, I'll share in my email uh, link to TUV. You can you can visit TUV. We can see uh, TUV is a, is a very reputed organization. So they have done more than six lakh certifications. They have twenty five thousand employees and are present across thousand locations in the world. So uh, very reputed. Uh, they're a certifying body. They they do assessments and certifications. Very respected in the railway industry. So we'll be giving you this, which will be equivalent and will be helpful in any 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 global context. I saw one question from uh, I think Miss Kaval Prit Kaur. Uh, how yes. this course is effective outside India? That's a very good question. See again, the question. The this is not a PMI deliver program for PMI certification. It's a competency building program. If you know this under, if you know this topic topic cover under various competency, you know, you go and talk to you know, in a planning engineer in Middle East or some other part of the world, he will talk about the same because this is following a standard, right? That then standard is let down by the other framework, which is PMI framework, Excellus framework. I have taken the best part of that, which is relevant. Here, the question of relevancy and competency is not about you know. This course will not give you a job, I know, in the Middle East or some other part. But yes, it, you will be, if you go and do a PMP certification, then you know a lot of topics already. Okay. Uh, any other question which people have? Uh, uh, okay, TUV stands where as compared to PF, PMP? Okay. So, uh, as we said, uh, uh, Samrat, sir, would you like to uh, uh, add yeah, something? This to course will cover PM, perspective, PM from customer perspective only. Yeah. It's both. It's both. It's a standard. It's talking about general competency building. Like I said, contract administration is a classic example. If I am a client side, I will develop, develop the develop the contract in some different parameters, and I'll give. For me, this will purely contract administration. But when it is a contractor, his perspective is contract administration for his subcontractor as well as delivering the contract. You know, it is contract contract management. So, so it is both perspective. We cannot differentiate a course like that, you know, client plus customer perspective or contract. It's, it's, it has to be common. It's a standard. So I would like to add particular one more thing aspect here that uh, in this training program, the, the most important part is that it's relevancy to the industry. So I have with me Mr. VK Krishnan. Uh, uh, so he uh, he's the one who actually stressed out the importance of making this uh, on, uh, importance on soft skills. So Krishnan, sir, would you like to Take one minute and just share uh, uh, your viewpoints on the on the practical aspects of this particular course. Yeah. Uh, see, I would first uh, like to start with thanking Mr. Samrat Ghosh and Mr. Pralay Kumar Das. They have actually covered, uh, they have not only covered, they have given a granular aspect of what is needed to be a project manager. They have covered a vast amount of data and competency requirement, what is needed to deliver a project. And to deliver a project, the project manager also needs to build certain amount of attributes in his behavior, in his thinking, and uh, what should I say, the way he communicates and the way he uh, interacts with the external world. And this was also brought out in many of the slides by Mr. Ghosh as to how important it is to communicate a schedule, to communicate a risk, to communicate uh, a lot of things. And this just does not come uh, overnight. Uh, and though a lot of packaged information is given in 20 hours, we also need to practice certain aspects of this and certain aspects of communication and so on and so forth. So the project manager wears during the course of the day of work, wears different hats. He's a communicator, he's a, a salesman, he's a coach, he's a specialist, he's a problem solver, and so on and so forth. And to be aware of that and to bring in more self-awareness, we also need to have certain traits constantly built into us to be able to deliver the project successfully. All the methods part that uh, which was also indirectly combined by Mr. Ghosh was brought out very nicely. But I would also say that we need to build that kind of competence in order to make the project engineers or the project managers. Uh, I think we have 100 odd people who participated and they are 100 odd project future or present project managers who need to acquire that kind of skill. And that is where the emphasis on soft skills is very important 
from the perspective of delivering all the competencies to get inbuilt or ingrained into their head. Oh, Mr. Ghosh, you if you have, Mr. Ghosh, if you have uh, any other uh, viewpoint or perspective, you can also add because you have brought out wonderful points during your presentation. No, 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 sir. So you, probably you you summarized what I meant to say, you know, and you have already done a very nice summarizing that the end. That's that's good. And uh, thanks for uh, highlighting that question also. It was very good to 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 start the course, actually. It's it's, it's very good. And I'm actually, the participants are also very varied, varied people. I've seen their profile. And, you know, at the end of the, after all, it's a free webinar. They are standing at the end of the two, more than two hours now. So, yeah, I, I hope uh, I'll, I'll see a lot of people uh, running up for That's this course. I think yeah. there, are, there are few questions which we can take up and then conclude the session. People, thank you so much, people, uh, so much, everyone, for your time. We really uh, are thankful to you. And, and I apologize that we exceeded the time, but um, I think I, I took permission also from the participants. Uh, so thank you so much for, you know, cooperating with us. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, so yeah, if uh, anybody, anybody has a specific question, please, I'll not bother other people. You, you give it to uh, Mr. Sumit and we will we'll respond. The Sumit got all that information about people's email ID. We'll yes, respond please, separately. Please contact us over our social media handles and we will, we will respond to you within no time. And uh, you may you may also write e uh, uh, send us an email query or contact us on WhatsApp. We'll share all the details. So uh, after this webinar, uh, we will share the the session recording, the course brochure, and the offer details with you on your email ID with which you have registered for the webinar. If so, someone wants Sumit, to talk uh, after the session, uh, so, Sumit, I think the other can go. I can talk to another five ten minutes. No problem. Yes, yes yeah. uh, Mr. Mr. Prabhakar has put up his hand. I think we should ask what he has to say. Yes. So uh, let me, yes, please. Uh, you have Mr. to unmute Prabhakar, him. Yeah, me, Mr. Prabhakar, and please. Uh, I think please he unmute needs to be unmuted. Yeah, sir, I've asked unmute. him to unmute himself. Mr. Prabhakar, and you may unmute yourself and please share your question. Hello. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Your uh, presentation is very good and uh, very, very much useful. But I need uh, all these details in mail so that I can talk with my organization. It sure, will be a, a, we, yeah. we, I will share the email uh, uh, with everyone uh, within, the, within the next six to eight hours. No, no, no. Yeah, yes, sir. with all this uh, 20 hours of program. Yes, uh, we will share the details with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that uh, our uh, juniors may join. So uh, I'm sharing my WhatsApp number in the chat. So all those who uh, want to have interactions directly with me, you may you may just uh, yes. send me a WhatsApp message and I'll respond to yes. you. Right. So please, okay, sir. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, actually, before we conclude, I just wanted to reinforce one more point. Uh, Mr. Ghosh has uh, outlined a lot of competencies, and these competencies are not to be. Uh, what should I say? It doesn't come automatically if you don't practice it, number one. Number two, for a given situation, these are all typical that he has explained. And many times, based on your experience with your customer and based on your experience with your uh, team, sometimes you need to be switching on your roles quite fast. And that smooth transition has to happen. And it comes only by practice. And these are the things that you need to ingrain yourself. And it comes uh, with a lot of attention to what the content is uh, getting delivered and how you practice the content and how seriously you imbibe those competencies into yourself as a DNA. It's very important for you to succeed as a project manager. Right. Thank you so much, sir, for your uh, insightful uh, insights. Uh, Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for your time. And I think we'll conclude the session here. And uh, uh, we'll share the details of the session and the course with you on your email shortly. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Ed. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot for your participation. Thank you. Thank you, Samrat, sir. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you everyone. Sir. Thank you, Christian, sir. We'll Thank catch you. up Most sometime. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ghosh, Mr. Das. You made wonderful presentation. Very insightful and very knowledgeable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night.